everybody welcome back to another episode of under the palms we're here with uh we got david hey guys we got justin what's up we got steven yo and we got a special guest will you're so i got a lot of i got a lot of questions for you bro all right yeah sounds yeah. good we're gonna go straight into it let's do it let's do it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. let's hear it justin just hack at me question one <laughs> question one all right man where, so where are you from where, where'd you grow up so i grew up in the east coast um originally i was basically born in queens new york flushing meadows parkway and then um, after that, I moved over to, like, New England area. So I lived over in, like, Rhode Island and, like, Massachusetts, Salem area. And then um, also went to Florida to live in my off for a little bit before I decided to make the move out to California and shit. So, so did you like growing up in uh, New York? How yeah, was that? Yeah, New York was pretty cool. Um, it's fast-paced, pretty grungy. Fuck that. You is. know, my vibe. Um uh, it was really cool. It's like uh, my favorite part was mostly the food, really. Just chopped cheese sandwiches, three bucks. Dude, you know? it is tough to Dude, be the three food bucks? in New York. Three bucks. It compared like there's nowhere else in the world that compares the food in New York. Yo, for real. Yeah. What is a chopped yeah. cheese sandwich? You don't know what that is. Never even heard of it. Okay, so basically it's like a Philly cheesesteak, right? But what you do is you they'll take the steak and they'll put cheese. And then they'll put steak, cheese, steak, and cheese. And then they'll put the bread and the bread on top, and they'll just squeeze it down. Oh. And then f- kind of, like, fry it a little bit. But, uh, dude, that oh. sounds insane. Dude, it was insane. Like thin steak? Like, like thin cuts? Yeah, no, like thin the, cuts. The thin oh, ribeye? Fuck yeah. dude. Like, what, steakums? Remember steakums as a kid? Uh-uh. I was, like, the ones you can get in the freezer aisle, like, mm, Rouse and shit. No. <laughs> I remember White Castle. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, close enough, close enough. What's that big-ass burrito that they sell at 7-Eleven? Like, the, like the, a Tina burrito? I don't remember what the brand is, but you can buy that like two dollar burrito that. Oh, oh the uh, Monterey, the, the Mega Worm, El Monterey or some yes, shit. El Monterey, El yeah, Monterey. That's the one. I'll fuck with that, dude. Yeah, fuck that's yeah. just so good. Yeah, Hell so, yeah. So, but um, that was it, really. Yeah, chopped cheese. Um, fucking, growing up, skating out there is a little different. You know, it's a little bit more. Uh, I guess you could say you got to f- stick to yourself and pretty much find your own crowd. But really. Yeah. So so you started skating at a young age? Yeah, pretty much. I actually started at like nine years old or ten, and I don't really remember how I started, but I, I think it was like some kid had a skateboard, and he was just busting kickflips and three flips. so I was like, You're yo. Like, I want to be part of that. Yeah. I was like, that looks way cooler than basketball or whatever I was watching before, so. Fuck yeah. Um, got on that. I busted an ollie <clears throat> my first time, and Uh-oh. yeah, ever since then, I was like, okay, I should probably start skating. Your first time? First like, time. first time on a skateboard or, like, your first time trying the trick? First time ever. You're just, boom. It was probably, like, one inch high. Like, the perfect Don't time. Don't let me fool you. Yeah, <laughs> just one <laughs> inch high. Oh. <laughs> Not 20 feet. It's just, yeah, like, yeah, a yeah, five-foot yeah. ollie. Just first time. <laughs> 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 Holy crap. That was the one human, thing. Once dude. you get that, you just want to do it, like, every fucking time, dude. Everywhere. Like, yeah, that sweet. one, like... Like when I was skating too, like I would do it everywhere and as much as I could mm-hmm. at speed too, because all these are different at speed. I feel like, yeah, you they know, are. like controlling that board is it, like a little bit more critical with that front foot, huh? Yeah, at speed. So you've been skating since you were ten. Are you? I've seen your clips on Instagram and YouTube and that type of stuff. Are you a pro skater? Are you? You're sponsored, right? Yeah. So right now I'm sponsored and I'm basically like an amateur, like pro, I guess you'd say. Okay. But um, I like to. C- Kind like of you're working on the clips, working on the clips, working on you know getting more on the uh, comp, you know more pro level. But uh, as of right now, I'm an amateur skater and uh, looking for it to see uh, how how much farther I can go in the next near future with it. So. Yeah. For everyone out there right now, uh, do you want to tell them what your Instagram is just in case they want to check it out? Yeah, shout it out. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, shout Where's out to my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is at z a n g dot will zang will. And uh, my name is Willie Correa, so you'll Boom. see me pop up with a pretty, like, weird, horrific, uh, sci-fi-looking photo of me oh. staring at the cornfields. But, uh, yeah. Oh, check I it saw out. that, dude. Where was that? Dude, I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it's just kind of one day I woke up. It was, like, on my Instagram. I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool. Kind of, like, eerie, but I was, like, it's sick. super eerie. Yeah. It's cool, though. Yeah. yeah. Like it. What if we, like, looked at his Instagram right now and, like, talked about one clip that you like oh, yeah, yeah, go right, yeah. go right yeah. ahead okay. we can like Pull describe it, it to it people up. let's see. Be let's, let's just find one one clip that you just want to talk about let's see this you guys choose the clip i'll talk yeah, about we'll, it we'll, we'll choose the Fuck clip yeah. and then uh we'll talk it through the people and then uh we'll see what see if we can find a good so, one. Oh, so how long a bunch. have you been filming your skating is that a newer thing or you've been doing that <coughs> yeah it's um it's pretty new 
uh, kind of growing up, I was m- more of like an, I guess you say infamous skater. Like I just kind of like would s- skate with pros and kind of like however, however I would get in there to s- someone to start filming me was my gateway in. Mm-hmm. But um, it was kind of more recently where I was getting hit up by uh, actual professional like filmers and people who are interested to like put like full video parts out for me. Oh so, shit! Yeah, I was just looking at this one, dude. This one's sick. I you go this. down, you you jump off the flight of stairs and then you uh you go up it. Oh yeah, Balboa set. Yeah, yep. you go down Whoa, there. Oh dude, that was and so sick. Up another sick. four oh, flights. That's sick. Yep, that yeah, was uh, fucking badass. Thanks, dude. Yeah, that was actually super fun. Um. That's actually right when I just broke up with this chick. We uh, just had, you know, pretty easy break off, and I was, like, really pissed. So I was, like, saw this perfect nine stair, like, you know, yeah. m- nice run up. I was like, oh, this looks like a good, great way to beat myself up. So <laughs> That was a nine stair? Yeah. Oh, no shit. Yeah, kick flip. yeah Damn, a little dude. nollie kick flip. You made flip. easy work of that. Thank you. Dude, nice how many stair. how many tries did that, like, take to, to get that down? It actually took, like, seven because there was, like, these, like, weird, um, this old dude that kept going in front of me and calling me, uh, What's it called? Uh, some crazy word. A skater boy? No, he was like, you fucking riff raff. So I'm like, oh, my God. oh man. Yeah, you like, rack you, a I was racking. <laughs> 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 you rack a ball. <laughs> do you, do you get a lot of people like hating and fucking yelling at you? While All you're the doing time. Shit? Really? Skaters All the time. The yeah. They're just no haters, shit. dude. They're they haters. don't even, they'll see me not know what I'm doing, but they'll just see the energy lineup that I'm doing and like, get in the I, way. They just don't like that there's that much energy going around them. So they're like, okay, well, Let's get in this guy's way and talk shit, but dude, what the fuck? I usually win. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's been a story since I usually win. Started. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, it's like the age old like the age old rivalry between skaters and just the the general public. <laughs> skaters versus the haters. I used to watch those YouTube compilations for hours of, of oh, like nice. people skating, <laughs> and then you know some angry old lady gets out of her car and starts screaming. You guys Call remember? Nine one one now. Yeah, so Dude, if you what, guys remember what the fuck's Skrillex. The point of that? Do you remember Skrillex? No idea. People with too yeah. much time on their hands. People just driving by, like, you're, you're doing one thing, they're doing another, and they just come up and start yelling at you for what? It's like, imagine you're working at Home Depot and you're just doing your job, and someone's just yelling at you, like, hey, don't you fucking pick up that plywood, motherfucker? Yeah. You're like, yeah. oh, what? <laughs> what, <the fuck? laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, what do I, I do now? <laughs> yeah, what are they gaining from it? <laughs> this, like, from, I have from, no idea. From yeah. like a, a, a perspective point, you have to think, like, all right, there, there's. If it's a security guard, yes, I get that because they're paid to like kind of yeah. guard the building. And if yeah. you fall, the rails yeah, nice. you know that thing. Right. But but a lot of times you see a lot of cool security guards and like, you know, that are they're like yeah, do the trick yeah. and then and then leave when you can. Like cool. But it's uh, usually some, people some just go, like it's some forty five year old woman with blonde hair, or it's a, like a, a sixty plus year old dude. Does she have no? Do they have no other cuts? person? They that have gets bowl mad cuts, at huh? Yeah, the, the, the Karens. Karen have to have the <laughs> Karen cut. There's no the Chad there. and Karens, yes. There the is Chad a breed of people I have to bring a dress to. When you do start skating, just be aware you will run into a Chad or a Karen, and you will know what I mean, a Chad or Karen. So just watch oh, yourself. Yeah. Push fast and just I keep your eyes on the goal, keep, okay? <laughs> dude, I'm going to tell you right <laughs> yeah, now, dude. Good advice. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, after this, dude, I'm going to be pumped to skate. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry to insp- inspired again. So we're going yeah, to have to go skate after this. this guy, Fuck yeah, I'm this down. This guy's a pretty good skater. He uh he does the transition stuff super well. Yeah, David's a beast. Bull, yeah. Bull, bull skating. Bull skating. I love that shit. Do you, yeah, so uh, when you were talking about the intro, you were saying um, like the area was a little grimy. or Grimy or is that the word? or? Yeah, it was grimy. pretty. You know, growing word? up in New York, it was like. I mean, it's kind of hard to remember sometimes exactly how I felt, but, like, it was kind of like a Stephen King movie every day. Like, there wasn't really any sun. It was kind of very overcast area. Would and, that, you know, would that like, describe the, the parks, though, too? Kind of rough around the edges? Like, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like, maybe, like, Potrero, if you've ever seen that in a video. It's kind of, like, just kind of a rough city skate park. Potrero, San Francisco, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Same exact thing. So we would skate right. there. That's, like, one of the, you know, the places we used to skate. And uh, I feel like there's there's, like, beauty in that. Right. A skate park that's kind of weathered, and it has you know the crowd, the local crowd there, and that you know they're kind of ominous almost. I feel like there's a lot, li- a lot of potential that can happen from a skate park like that. Especially, and you know, the cool thing about New York now is New York has um, actually accepted skateboarding as not really a sport to say, but more of an outlet for people to be creative. So. New York's actually pretty dope now. They support uh, graffiti artists. They support skaters. Um, I went over there actually recently, and what was super cool was you'll go to a lot of these, you know, different bureaus, and you'll see um, just literally apartment buildings just filled with, like, this crazy art that you would never see in, like, 
the skate oh, like park. in the building? Like, in the building, oh, out the, the building. The like, it was, like, it was almost like an artist's world, you know? And then I noticed that they were building more skate parks in New York, which is super sick. Shout out New York for that. Okay. New York skaters definitely need some more, like, of a welcoming for skateboarding, so... Do you have a lot of friends still out in New York? Um, yeah, a lot. Of, well, you know, a lot of them that I grew up with, they all have kids or like right. they're all like either dead or you know a certain shit. So um, I'm kind of like the only one out of my crew, basically that kind of stepped out and made something happen. But um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah. So it's kind of weird, uh, but yeah. Well, so what was it like growing up in New York? <clears throat> well. Growing up in New York was like... Or in like Queens, you're from Queens, right? Yeah, yeah. Queens. What was, what was it like growing up in Queens? Dude, it was just... So, okay, so basically the, the whole point to say is like, when I grew up, I lived in this uh, old psych ward that they turned into a Section 8 apartment building. Oh, really, dude. Fuck, dude. Any yeah. ghosts? Sorry. Yeah, dude, I was, I was actually just going to say it's one of the most haunted buildings oh. in New York. It was called the King's Corp um, building for... It was an old insane asylum uh, around the... Uh, 1400 no 1940s or 1930s or something and um they destructed it and they turned into these section a houses well my mom got an offer hey do you want to live in this basically this apartment you know section a is for free mm-hmm. and uh when we went over there just sh- weird shit started happening and like kind of like um almost the conjuring like weird oh, shit was flying it. around any it's movie with a dream yeah. Yeah. With it. Dude, you gotta God. you gotta oh, elaborate on that i'd love yeah. to hear more about yeah. that we need to talk about this bro All right. <laughs> 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 yeah just uh yeah just tell me what you want to know and well so you moved into these apartments what kind of weird stuff would happen uh so uh, the weirdest a lot of the first start first things that were happening that was super odd was um forks and spoons were the first thing I noticed that was super weird. They would just randomly go across my living room while I'm watching TV. Ghost no love My mom would not like be home. Like flying across the room or? Landing directly in the wall, like stuck to the wall. I swear. Stop it, dude. Jeez. Yeah, and I thought, see, my mom, I would think she's home. So I'd be like, oh, like hey, oh, mom, mom, like, what's back? up? Why are you like, throwing forks oh. at the wall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mom brought up my the My mom wasn't again. even yeah. home. Yeah, she was just out working at a, you know, wow. her, um check cashing place she did that for a lot of her life so that's straight out of insidious that's like yeah that's like a like a horror story when you're taking a shower and you hear a noise and you know no one's home and you're like oh fuck. Da, 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 da. yeah oh, and dude. then the doors were open and slamming something about something about just that paranormal energy dude it's just it's scary you know it's it's, it's, it's a lot is that yeah. something like you just kind of got used to or is that yeah. just pretty like much always i kind of befriended the ghost i feel like i he like they started leaving me alone once i realized like i'm not scared of that shit you know yeah but it was more the best way to put it to explain it was like the more scared i was and the more i felt like not safe was how they were able to like they would feed off that conjure yeah. up yeah, actually and yeah feed off of me so yeah. they can turn into some shit and i mean like craziest shit i've seen was you know, I was in my bed one day, and I'm sleeping, <clears throat> and my bed starts shaking. So I thought it was in an earthquake, right? And I'm, like, looking around. I'm, like, holy fuck, I'm in an earthquake. Like, I was about, like, I think six years old at this time. And uh, there's a fucking light under my bed. So Shut up, I Swear dude. to God. Swear to God. And, oh, um, wow. I just, dude, I would have like the light. <laughs> it was just like, a like the real boogeyman is under like, there. Yeah, I'm gonna go live with our grandparents. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't my room live here anymore. My room had a pentagram on it. Actually, when they took all the tiles out of, out of my room when we moved Stop out, it, there was dude. really a oh, pentagram. Stop it. Fucking painted on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my wow. mom didn't even know too. She was so shocked because she's Catholic, so she know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She starts saying, "Oh, was Jesus, wow. this, Jesus, that." I was like, "What the fuck's happening?" You know, I feel like a lot of people it was weird. have like moments where something like that would happen, and I think a lot of people brush it off. Yeah, as like, oh, you know, it's probably like the wind or probably something that I imagined. But I feel like a lot more people experience stuff like this than like they care to admit. You know what I mean? Right. Like I think we <coughs> people probably think you're crazy. Well, yeah, because like right. I, I remember one day, dude. Like I, I felt like someone was tugging at my shirt. And I felt like this tug. And I looked uh, back. That and was me. Sorry. No one was there. <laughs> and it was it, it was like the weirdest thing ever. And I was just like standing there still like. Was that when you were a kid? No, this was I was um, it was probably a couple of years ago. So I was probably like pretty like recently. 20, 21, something like that. Yeah, it was right before that. Uh, the, the we did the um, the what do you call it? Parade with and I was with Raul. Uh, you remember oh, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did like the box. I did the kick, mm-hmm. the kick thing. But right before I went out, I was super nervous and I felt this tug. I was like, I looked, I remember just looking back, like, 
you know, who was there. Yeah. And just, it was like the weirdest thing, you know? And uh, I, I don't know if anyone else here has any experiences, mm. anything else. Uh, I don't know. I don't think yeah. I have like any. seen stuff. I've had bad dreams. Oh, actually. Nothing like that. Yeah. Not me personally, but I remember a friend of mine had a, uh, and, I, and I actually, I saw the, the photos. It was a fucking trippy. My friend Michaela was staying at uh, my, like my good friends, like you know, good family friend. I, I refer to him as like my cousin's aunt, uncle, whatever. So they were staying at my uh, my friend's house because they had a dog. So she was there uh, watching the dog while they were on vacation. And she said she kept like hearing just like weird noises throughout the house, like screaming. She's like, "Dad, do I like no one's home?" So she like go and look, and there'd be nothing there. And she said she took a photo, like, with the dog, with herself and the dog. And earlier, earlier that night, she had, like, looked down the hall and saw, like, this, um, there's, like, this, this bench in the bedroom that you can see from across the hall in, in the living room. The door was open. It was a dark room. So she saw two, like, green eyes, like, glowing. Oh, no. Like, staring at her. Oh, my nope. gosh. And she was, like, freaking where, where out. Where was she? Like, where was she? This was at my, uh, my friend's house. But she was in a room? or No, she was in the living room, but okay. if you look down the hall, you could see she into could the see bedroom. She could see the bench, yeah. Oh. You could see into the bedroom. And, um... That's terrible, dude. Yeah, and Horrifying. she said she saw these two, like, green eyes glowing. That's terrible. Staring, staring back at her, and she was, like, freaking out. She didn't know what the fuck was going on. So she, like, turned all the lights, like, next to you know, turn around, and it's gone. Better she than said, red eyes. What the fuck eyes. was that? Like, kind of, like, peeking around looking didn't see it again and um then she went back in the living room took a photo like with the dog and she looked at the photo and in the photo in the fireplace behind her she saw this like whole figure with the same green no eyes. she like, did not a full-on fucking figure we might have to see she this went, photo we're gonna have to try and find this photo i can probably text her and, and yeah. get yes. it from her I would, wow. yeah, uh, that, should be, that should be the <laughs> thumbnail or whatever yeah. it's yeah. called a thumb pick or whatever. yeah 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 <laughs> um, the pick thumb <laughs> yeah yeah so she saw that and literally went screaming crying like ran out of the fucking house with the dog and shit Jesus. like took the dog and left and like never went back dude Dude, that's and she said, like insane. the entire time she was there, that's all she could hear, which is like screaming, like there's something walking around, like someone else is there. That's terrible. And she was fucking freaked out. And as soon as like she saw that photo, dude, it was fucking all over, and she took off. You, you guys Jesus. have heard of the uh, electric. Yeah. You guys have heard of the electric magnetic uh, field, right? Yeah. You guys ever heard of that? So that's uh, I think I think that's I, I think I have it right, but it's like a it's like a spectrum. Yeah, it's like the spectrum of light that we can see. Mm-hmm. And so it's like imagine a semicircle, right? Like a half sun. And we can only see like a sliver, like with with the the wavelengths. I can mm-hmm. tell you guys all about this. This was my major. Oh yeah. They, oh yeah. So yeah. Y- you explain this better than me then. And um, you can read it with EMF readers. Yeah, but like like right? so. So what is this, Steven? So like yeah. So it's basically light uh, operates. It goes at the same speed no matter what if it's in air, but it operates at different frequencies. So like radio waves, for example, like if you're broadcasting from the radio, those are like a meter wide, where the light will like propagate over a meter mm. right but if you if you go into the doctors and you get an x-ray they're much smaller they're well they're even smaller than that they're, they're just microscopic at that point right so the 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 waves that we see are um a small segment of that and that's called visible light so from red to basically blue purple ultraviolet those are all the colors we can see is in between that but but there's light shooting all over our head above us that we just can't see so do you think that could there could be like potentially objects around us that could be in a different wavelength that we just can't observe like maybe animals can not necessarily objects like like particles right so okay but so particles can be in a shape right because we're particles. well no so it's a it's a photon right is what it's called so it's a massless particle that mm-hmm. carries basically a certain amount of energy like a ghost that's what i'm trying to yeah, so what i'm trying maybe. to say is like yeah Stephen was a uh, there is a different major. Yeah, yeah wow. I studied yeah. this for a long time. That's pretty rad. He's but, a genius. But do you think it's possible? Like, <laughs> like ha, ha, have people tried to figure out if maybe there's a different, like, maybe there's like a way to look at different wavelengths and see, like. Well, so I don't know. So like a dog, for, like we see red, green, and blue, right? Those are the three colors that we see, and every Primary color colors. that you see is a mix between red, green, and blue. Right. A dog sees only red and blue. So everything that a dog sees is some mixture between red and blue. But there's a there's this animal called the mantis shrimp. You ever heard? Oh of this? yeah, those things oh, are yeah, nuts. Yeah, like yeah. The, if you if you want a cool like YouTube video to watch, get high and watch this shit. Mantis shrimp, they can see twenty six 
different colors. We can see three. Do you think they're just tripping out their whole life? So like, oh my god! It's like they're on mushrooms twenty four seven. Oh my god! <laughs> <so> <laughs> many I can't even imagine what yeah, they're possibly seeing. Bonkers. Seen. They're just they're <laughs> just like last year. They're yeah. just like uh, <laughs> confined to a life of darkness in the water, so they and they've been see. gifted with the the. the ability to see every color yeah i mean you think how like beautiful and colorful our world is and we can only see three colors like whatever they see that's crazy dude. they can see microwaves they can see x-rays no shit. See so so what do you wow. think what do you think an explanation explanation would be for an animal you know when you have a dog or a pet or something and and they look kind of like up or they'll look at a corner of the room or something and they'll kind of look startled oh do what you, do have you, you ever seen those videos where they like will howl at something no no well yeah but <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I see the videos where like, <laughs> where uh, like people have two different animals, like a dog and a cat, and then all of a sudden like the dog will die, and oh, I didn't know like the cat that. will like go and like I, I remember seeing this video. There's like a video of like a cat like reaching out to like where the dog like they thought the cat was like communicating with the dog. No way! I've never seen oh, a lot man, of videos like see. that. Bring that shit up, dog. Dude, I, I, gotta I, I, I gotta find the there. I gotta find the best way. You gotta clip this video dies. into the yeah, podcast. Yeah, I need to see this. That does sound crazy, though. Edit this video into the podcast whenever you upload it. For show. Sure. Oh, I got the photo, too. So that our many viewers can watch it as well. That's true. Along with our commentary. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, dogs have much better uh, hearing and smell than us, so like they just notice things. Like well, that. it's funny. To go back on the uh, mag- when we were talking about the magnetic field and mm-hmm. stuff, um, you know, y- you know, like there's certain areas in the world where there's a higher magnetic frequency than huh. most places. Yeah. So it's funny because when I went to Joshua Tree recently and um, Proctor Valley, I went to a lot of these places that have huge magnetic pools. Um, you know, a lot of weird shit would happen to me over there. Like um, my car would be on full gas, you know, and then I'd look and it's on E or my phone would be on 100 percent. I'd look and it's just completely dead. Mm. And like, I did I just imagine that? Like, yeah. right before you, like, did I imagine it being full? Or I had I my ex girlfriend with me, so like, I at least had some proof that I wasn't going completely insane. Yeah. But um, I definitely saw, you know, a figure I'll never forget in Joshua Tree when I, I actually got stuck in the desert because our car stopped working. So we go in this area, and I actually had enough internet to look it up, and we were in an area that was called the Mojave Project, and um, it's a high magnetic pool area where um. A lot of weird ghost shit happens. There's Sasquatch scenes, um, aliens, and all that. I mean, dude, we literally, me and, my, me and my ex-girlfriend saw this figure sliding between the trail like this, left to right. And, you know, at first when I saw this thing, I'm like, what the fuck is that? She's looking. She's like, that does not look like that. I can see what you're seeing. Swear to God. This thing came up right to our car, and it somehow formed into a weird plasmic clear field looking energy like a person like it shaped into a person and it knocked on our door like this mm. me and her literally shitting ourselves locked the car and we didn't do anything and then out of nowhere oh. the, t- the tow truck guy came right after that oh my god but we were saying what if we got stuck out there like all night like in that area like you know you would have went mental dude you would have had to have been one we would have went, went skate mental nuclear right, yeah nuclear the, uh, mental <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the video it's called oh, we got the video Here the video is oh, called six, cat yeah, sees yeah. the ghost of his diseased dog friend all right show oh, us that's so video. sad shut up yeah the Aww. cat's like reaching out like petting the dog like leaning up against it there dude oh my god what a fucking trip dude. yeah that's what the so fuck? Dude, yeah, that's exactly, so huh? crazy. That's trippy. That's fucking trippy. What if it wasn't like that? What if it was just a demon dog, like it turns into a monster? Yeah. And the cat's like, what? That's you crazy. ever see that movie, All Dogs kidding. Go to Heaven? I hate watching that's sad shit, dude. That's a, crazy, that's a great movie. All Dogs dude, Go to Marley Heaven. Dude, Marley and Me. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> I literally cried in that movie. Yeah. Have you guys ever... I can't watch that ever again. Sad turn, but have you guys ever gone to have your dog put down? Yeah, my mom always puts our dogs down when I'm gone on vacation. That's good. (laughs) She waits to till I'm gone on vacation. Like um, every time, yeah, every time we, I, I, like our dog's about to die, my mom will wait till I go like away for the weekend or something, and she'll put the dog down. Why? 
because I'm fucking emotional you about okay. that so, shit. So you're, you're happy that she does it that way. Like, you don't want to go. I've caught on. It's like not, you know, like she told she's me there's no the Santa bad Claus, bad you know? Yeah. yeah. Or it's just like, you know, it's like, fuck. Every time she tells you, know, you something good, you're it's like, like, who's dying? Every time I go out of town, it's like, is the dog going to die? Uh, <laughs> you know, you got to stop going out of town. Right? I know, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked. Could you give right, me some I milk? Have the, yeah. I also have that photo. Let's see. Of, oh. the, of the fireplace. Oh, you found it? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So here's here's the, the photo, and I zoomed in on it. Okay. Let's Just normal photo. Yeah. Okay. Jesus Viewers Christ. out there. Where is this? Photo. Viewers, house? be ready. Yeah. Yeah, this is at the house, and there's it zoomed in. Let me look at this motherfucker. Let's see. We might have to put it. Let's see. I, don't, I can't see. Let's see. There's a brightness all the way up, yeah? Yeah, it, it is kind of tough to see. Oh, yeah. It, you know, when you actually, that is super weird. If you put it like this. What are you seeing? If you, if you, you have to zoom let out me, a little bit. Let me clean my phone screen because it's yeah. like smudged right You there. can see. <laughs> if you, if Piece you of grease. Out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you zoom it out a little bit, you can actually see like, it looks like an best. eye with a pupil. Oh, it's yeah. kind of at an angle. Um, and you guys will be able to see this too. Oh, right, right. That, that's way better there. Yeah, if you zoom out a little bit, co- cover it with your hand and you'll be able to see it. Oh, okay. And then yeah. Show, show well, yeah, here, pass it down. Yeah. Yeah. Cover your eyes and see that. So you gotta cover your like eyes? No, no. I mean, I mean cover, <laughs> I'm cover, just kidding. cover oh, the, the shit, screen. Dude, just just close your eyes and imagine it. It looks like Gengar's eyes right from there. Pokemon behind her. Or what's oh, that? Yeah, shit. that's that's trippy. What's that MMA dude? Yeah. company Fuck. with the eyes? Is yeah. Logo. Oh no fear. It's crazy. Like so. sometimes that's you have to like look at these photos and stuff. You know what's really interesting about this picture oh, is if you look right. So she has a dog. Yeah. But I mean, if you look farther away, it looks like a fucking cat. That's what she was saying. She thought it was a cat. Yeah, that's what that's what she thought it was. It, or like Batman. The first time she saw it. That's oh trippy. Oh my god! And that yeah, dude, that, that's some. Oh no, that looks like an owl. Actually, look at it again. Oh looks yeah. Looks like a barn owl. What that, the that's fuck, a, dude? That's an owls. Fireplace. Yeah, yeah, owls are uh, owls are trippy. That's an dude. Owls are fucking trippy. Yeah, they that's, could be a, that's evil an or fireplace. They could be good. Exactly. Maybe yep. it's an owl. Dude, I love owls. Well, then why would it be too. in the yeah. in the bedroom like on the other side of the house? Like moments before. No, no, yeah. That makes so. I've heard stories because, you know, I'm Native American. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember, like, I was told, like, a long time ago, like, certain things, like, with animals, um, they could they could be in certain areas, like, and be a poltergeist spirit because, you know, basically something happened where the animal got mutilated or it's just, like, an unrestful, easy spirit. So, oh, shit. Vengeance. But, I mean, that's a pretty prominent photo of, like, an owl looking. Ghost, I guess. Is but that, is that the fireplace? Gnarly. Yeah, that's the fireplace. That's, that's not a window. That's no, nuts, that's, a, that's a fireplace. Now I know why she looks so scared in the photo. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, ah! yeah. dude, that's crazy. That's uh, nuts, man. Wow. Yeah, dude, that's a fucking trip. I forgot all about that till you till you brought that up. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I we we got to see that, dude. Yeah, that's more proof yeah. than I needed. Shit. You guys remember the show? Uh, uh, I think what is it? Um. Is it Ghost Hunters or Paranormal Hunters or I Ghost know, Adventures? Ghost Adventures, yeah, you know all those videos. Yeah, I mean they got me so intrigued in like going places at night because every, every like they make that if there's if you learn anything from that show it's that ghosts pop out at night always. Right. Like if it's dark, it's always scarier, and ghosts happen unless you're in a mine by yourself. Oh yeah. 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 You go to an abandoned mine. You go at least 100 feet down. You so there was this one I want to do that. I'm obsessed with mines. And Joshua's like, tree. I went dude. into one. I got a it's video game freaky, for you, dude. Justin. Yeah. It's called Minecraft. I've been watching this YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He'll lose his shit, dude. He's like, oh, my <laughs> Another God. mine. Oh, God. Dude, There's that, so that, many. That game was amazing, dude. I, I, was, I was thinking about game. that the other day. Yeah, yeah you should go Joshua Tree to be a good spot. Yeah, dude, I've been wanting to go to Joshua Tree for a while. But, like, I'm like this dude bought a Cerro Gordo mine. Um, like about a year ago, and he lives there, and he's like building it up, and dude, he goes like eight hundred feet, a thousand feet underground to these mines. Dude, they're insane. I want to go there. He so found one hundred year old Levi jeans. Yeah, for real, dude. Yeah, I like, saw, he hunts wow. these Levi's jeans down in these mines, and it's it's dude. The I'm only way he found them was from the dude. button. It said dude, we should go. We should go visit him. We, you can. He's building this like hotel on the thing, and like it's up in Joshua Tree. Like it's called Cerro Cerro Gordo. Cerro Gordo. Yeah. Okay. And it's this guy from the East Coast, and he bought this mine, and he just like, dude, he's killing it. Like, does all this crazy shit. Like, goes in this mine. It's dope. Dude, I'm totally going there. I'm gonna bring a 12 pack of beer and some weed. Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we can stay there and trip out with him, dude. It's it's fucking sick. Hell yeah. I'm into it. Like, let's do. Every every time I tell someone about this, they're like, what? 
something that doesn't sound that rad, but like I'm I'm down, man. I, like I want to go. Yeah, we should do a podcast with him, dude. Yes, yeah. He'd, he'd, he'd be into it. Be, he'd be into it. Super into it. Um, okay, so let's get on track here. Um, so back to you growing up in New York. So I know you've seen some other crazy shit in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, other than like living in a fucking apartment that's super possessed. But like, what what are the things that you've seen in like New York? Queens um, was a is a pretty tough neighborhood, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, it's one of the toughest bureaus for yeah. sure. Um, mostly due to, well, you know, my house. I was actually close to a lot of famous rappers. Um, Big oh, really? L was in the area. Um, is Nicki Minaj from Queens? I think she was. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, what was the other dude? Uh, Nas. Nas oh, lived Nas. a few blocks. Yeah, dude, I've like Nas met his sick. grandma and shit. No, no way. shit. Yeah. It was like he knew my mom. Somehow. Really? Yeah. Damn. Dang. That's dope. Yeah, so I, I was like kind of intertwined, but like that area is really hardcore. I mean, if you listen to the music that the guys are talking about, like Big L, you know, mm-hmm. lifestyles of the poor and dangerous. I mean, you get a good little hint of how basically it's grunge new york can get and how it's just a very core grunge vibe there you know shit dude it's it's fair weather but you know for the most part i remember growing up i i was looking out my balcony one day on this you know and i seen this dude fucking you know basically with the three bags full of money so i remember i'm with my aunt and you know we're both looking i think my aunt said like she just says, what the fuck is this? You know, because she's like Puerto Rican. She's just like tripping out. She's like, she wanted me to go inside, but I was like, I'm not going inside. You know, because we were so high up. I got to get shot shit. at. Yeah. Fucking dude gets shot six times, maybe six to five times. Um, right in front of you. Right in front of us. What was he wearing? A scarecrow costume. Oh, my God. What the fuck? The guy shooting or the guy so getting shot? Gnarly, the guy dude. getting shot and the, the dudes in F, like FBI or CSI dudes came up in a van and they basically like... He shot at two dudes and they, they died. I mean, they were bleeding on the ground. And mm-hmm. um, basically, when that happened, they put those dudes back in the van. The dude who got shot, he must have had a bulletproof vest. I mean, he didn't. Nothing happened. He just kept running with his money. And I mean, the oh, dude was so like, he was robbing a bank. Basically, robbing a bank in a yeah. scarecrow costume. And I mean, when I say scarecrow That's costume, nuts. I'm talking about the one from Batman. If Wizard you guys of Oz. know what that looks oh, like. Oh, 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 Batman. Batman. So had like yeah, a, that like Batman. Sack over his head. The sack over his wow. head with the black Way, eyes. Dude. Damn. Yeah. You watched this whole thing go down. Watched the whole thing go down. Was this on Halloween? Um, no, this was actually in the summertime. Okay. Yeah, it was even more weirder. It That's what be we a good said. Time to rob a yeah, it would be Halloween. Yeah, that was what I was thinking too. Yeah. But yeah, fucking dude, just survived and or I don't know and. So, so you watched a shootout. A shootout. Yeah. With yeah. a guy dressed up as a scarecrow and a bag of bags of money. Yeah. Dude, it was fucking so rad. Wow. I thought it was rad. I oh mean, God. as a kid, I was like, "This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, dude." <laughs> do it again. <laughs> yeah. hey, can Yo, you, can we rewind? Can that? you guys pause? Yeah. Yeah. Do it again. Wait, let me get, let me get my camera. Out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do we have an iPhone or something? Do we have yeah. a, a little? Yeah, dude. That's nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty uh, crazy for sure. And um, uh, another thing I seen. Yeah. I don't remember. I think that I think those are probably by far like the craziest. That's things pretty I've nuts. Seen. Yeah. I mean, I remember weirdest thing, too, was, like, w- when we were leaving uh, our apartment building and me and my f- uh, mom were going to go to Florida, she uh, was having all the towels taken out. And remember, I told you there was a pentagram in my room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the entrance of the doorway of our house, there was actually one tile that these uh, Mexican workers found that had Latin writing on it. Now, when we say Latin writing, it was so perfectly, precisely cursive that... There was no way those dudes could... I'm not talking shit, but I'm saying there's no yeah, way you yeah, could yeah. draw or, like, write like that. Like, this looked very, like, ancient writing. Oh, shit. And um, we had the same tiles, I think, from the hospital that was there. No fucking way. So, you know, if you think about it, me and my mom had no idea. Like, Section right. 8, you just get your house, boom, you live there, it. and then that's it. Like, yeah. you have mm-hmm. no questions. You can't really change anything about it. But, yeah, dude, dude we found this one... You know, the guys were talking, saying, oh, God, they're telling Jesus this. It's like, you're obviously, like, very, like, conflicted about this tile. Yeah. And um, I swear to God, dude, I'll never forget this. There was a handprint of a demonic-looking hand. I'm talking about, you know how like, we have these two bone structures on our fingers? Like, yeah. Right here to here. Well, there was three. And then a long-ass nail. Oh, and with shit. a signature. A Stop line it, saying, dude. sign here in Latin. Shut up. Swear ah. to God. Swear to God. Wow. Yeah, and my mom, my mom just... 
she just freaked out. Like, my mom was just like, okay, well, I don't want to see that. And then she basically took it from me. She was like, don't you touch that. Like, because she was pretty, like, spiritual. So she felt like there was something really weird about that place, and that's why she wanted to move. But Do you yeah, think it was, like, a, a, a crazy person? or do, what, what do you? We don't know. Yeah, what do you think What do you think was, that was all about? You know, to this day, I'm I'm still very clueless on what the, the tile, you know. Did anyone, like, ever come and, like, check it out, like, a, like an expert or – no you just keep it to yourself we kept it of. to ourselves because you know when you're living in section a like you don't want to like bring shit up like that because they'll right. probably say like you're crazy yeah or, like, right shit right. like that so. that goes back to like nobody talks about seeing things because you're things. crazy yeah. yeah yeah i mean we had proof i mean there were seven workers there taking the towels that's that crazy could dude. see it that's, yeah that's nuts so um yeah dude fucking uh go just halloween every day in my world how, how long do you live there for uh like a few years like eight years ten years dang yep 28 now so yeah yeah that was a while ago okay fuck yeah man did you did you like new york did you like living there yeah yeah, yeah i liked it you like the scene i like the scene i like the woman there i like the food um i personally just moved because i've been you know in an area where there's not a lot of sun and i you know i want to focus on skating so yeah I need to get out to an area where there was more, you know, better weather for me to, like, you know, grow in and did, stuff. Did you pick San Diego because you had friends or family here, or? Actually, no. Um, my old sponsor from Boston called One Gig Skate Shop <clears throat> actually just, like, flew me out here. Oh, shit. And I basically, like, got lucky and, like, ran into some, like, homies and mm -hmm. ended up crashing at their place. But, yeah, it just all kind of, like, worked out pretty, like, easy. So, yeah, Fuck it yeah. was rad. I was gonna go to LA, but LA was kind of like whatever at the time. Yeah, LA, LA sucks. No, yeah. nobody LA. likes LA. Yeah, people that live in LA don't like. LA. <laughs> <laughs> like, why do you don't come to LA? Yeah, dude. Say that LA again. Is just, Say that again. I said YG told us don't come to LA. Yeah, no problem. I don't want to go there. It's not even YG, is it? I don't even know. I don't know. I just heard it somewhere. Yeah, I yeah. No idea. It's a terrible place. Yeah, uh, a lot of crazy shit happens it's there. So. Yeah, Would you have rather like grown up out here versus New York or like oh, yeah. anywhere else? You or know, are you, I are think you pretty like, glad that you fucking grew up in New York? I'm pretty glad I grew up where I did. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, you got to think about it. That builds character. That builds, builds you know, just a lot of different parts of you that you can't really build in an area that you that wouldn't have happened at, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, I would not change my life for a thing, you know? Fuck yeah. So, yeah, no, that's cool. Do you think okay. you'll ever move back to New York? Uh, you know, I've always said if I ever, like, go pro and, like, have an opportunity where I can, like, be a pro skater and, like, live in New York, yeah. I, I definitely will. But, like, honestly, living in California is, like, a dream, so I'd, I don't mind staying out here and doing it, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the weed out here is obviously a bomb. Hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that best, part. <laughs> do you know any world. pro skaters that are from New York? Yes, I do. So, uh, I know Ronnie Torres, and he's from Queens, New York, too. He's, okay. look him up, Ronnie Torres is a legendary Torres. skater, fucking been holding it down for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, there was, like, a bunch of them. I think Ronnie Torres is, like, more, like, the one that I was, like, super hyped on. He just had, like, a super wild style, like, Z York vibes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, oh, Z York. Z York, nice, yeah. Dude. Those were the dudes back in the day, for yeah. sure trying to think who else uh i think that's about it yeah do you have a do you have a favorite pro skater uh oh, yeah. andrew reynolds andrew reynolds yeah yeah. yeah dude he's my favorite just watching him skate he's solid fucking solid person solid skater you can't really ask for a better person than that you know i like uh chris jocelyn chris jocelyn yeah yeah, yeah he's a fucking powerhouse so good you dude, know who my so favorite rad. skater is tim brosh r.i.p do you know who Tim Brosh is? OG skater, right? Yeah. Probably yeah, right. back in the day. Tim Brosh, RIP, dude. Dude, yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, I forgot. For that guy sure. was. Yeah, he was legendary, yeah. man. Tim Brosh. Tim Brosh. I always loved Grant Taylor. Oh, yeah, Grant Taylor. Grant Taylor is sick. Like, He's a fucking icon. He kind of kills it with every style. You know, he can kind of go, you can put him anywhere and he'll, he'll just skate like just the flow he has. And like he, he'll make a crowd just stop and watch, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your goal with skating? Like, how far do you want to? Do you want to go? You know, till the wheels fall off, baby. I mean, <laughs> shit. You know, for me right now, I'm just. I want to be the best per version of myself and skate as hard as much as I can yeah. until my body gives up. But I mean, hey, I'm still in my twenties, and 
you know, I still have a lot to offer for skating, so just kind of see where it goes at this point. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully as long as I can, and always going I want to, I want to help inspire the youth and yeah. kind of inspire people who are in like low income housing, like I was, where you know you wouldn't be able to afford a skateboard and stuff. And yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. also being Native American, I want to help support the Native American community as much as I can. So you know, mm-hmm. whenever I go pro, I want to have my board sales going to helping out reservations and helping, you know, basically have them skate, giving them skate parks, skate shops, or basically making sure a lot of those people in those low income housing still have the opportunity to go skate, even though they can't afford it. So that's that's kind of what I'm going to do with skating eventually if I get big enough. Are you going to open up like a foundation or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be through my board sale. So whoever I'm pro for, like, it'll be like a percentage goes out to like a a native American communities and that's awesome, man. Yeah. Low income housing kids. So yeah. And hopefully I'll, that will help keep them, you know, out of trouble like I was getting into. So yeah, I feel like that's that's the amazing thing with skateboarding. It's like <laughs> you can get anyone in a different place and have like all these different situations. But right, skateboarding yeah. <laughs> is like the one unity that like can really you, you know like the youth or even like anybody like anybody can put their energy into it. Yep, and like funnel that energy into good things. You know, it's like one of those, and it, and it's accessible to everyone mostly. Yeah, you know, like grow like so. I grew up in England, right? And it was it would rain all the time, like always wet on the ground. But there were still days where you know it would kind of dry up, and you could go skate. But dude, like I, like there's a lot of good things that can come out of, of putting your energy like that into skating. You know, learning to get up when you fall. I mean, oh, skating is for one of the sure. best things I feel like for a young person or biking or you know there's a lot of sports you can do. But skateboarding is one of the I think gives you the best benefits as far as like life lessons go. Yeah, I think you learn a lot. <laughs> Infinite, you got attacked by a fly. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, it must be all those showers you've been taking. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. Well, all right. well, you know what? Not if you keep not showering, you're gonna time and place, time and place, more guys. staff, time and place, yeah. you know, more staff. No, we he just started. He just started van life, living in his van. Yeah, you. trying to save it's some been money. A Shout out to the van life. It's been uh, 25 days now, I think. It's actually been going by pretty quick. I feel like, but I've been. Getting used to it, which is either a good or bad thing. Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it I, could I'll, go two ways. I'll, I'll tell you right now, dude, honestly, like from a real standpoint, yeah, I'm getting, you know, it's easy to miss a couple days going to showers, brushing my teeth. It's, you know, not that I was good at it before. <laughs> yeah, ladies. But, you know, and I, he's I'm single. <laughs> he's single, ladies. Remember this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I don't know, man. So am I. You know, so am I. My 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 <laughs> appetite. <laughs> like, he, ever since ever since I was little, you know, like I, I would eat the worst. We're foods, all single, you know? actually. Yeah. We're all Cheers, single brother. Hey, oh, shout out. Shout out. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there it Cheers. Is. More Cheers. beers. We don't need chicks. <laughs> oh, we, yeah, no, we do. I know I take that. <laughs> yeah, we actually do, but it's cool, dude. <laughs> Shout out to all the beautiful women out there. Yeah, we really we love you and respect you. And, we'd be uh, nothing with the women who would be nothing us. without y'all. So we just shout out to all the women out there for just holding it down on the oh, other yeah. side of town. <laughs> Holla at your kids, son. Holla at your kids. Holla at your boy. <laughs> Zang got will. His DMs are open. <laughs> DMs are open. I don't have a working phone, so it might take a while. But I'll get up, I'll get on there. Soon Send a later. messenger pigeon. It'll open up a, a PO box for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get a PO box open. Get soon. some get some pen pals. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, if a lady writes Jesus. you a letter, you know she's a real one. She's into it. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. She's 90. Does a letter count as like an hour long DM text? <laughs> yeah. You ever see yeah. some I of those? I guess that's a new age one. Hi Willie, how are you? I love you so much. You ever see those, <laughs> you ever see those guys in? Uh, Mijo. You ever see those guys in, in prison and they'll be getting these love letters from women who Dude. are just like uh, uh, are totally just like. Just I'm obsessed smitten. with that show. 90 yeah. Day Fiance. Yeah. So what? Like, love what after have you seen on that show? I've never. Love it's my my, my guilty pre- pleasure. I've never even heard of the show. Yeah, I love so, it. So Justin, tell tell him about. Like, no, I don't want to get into it. Love after lockup. I don't want to get into it. We want to know. Anyway, oh, so yeah. Sweet. Come on, come on, Justin. No, oh, no. Hey, hey, hey. Anyway, Justin, so the how about are how about you remember what you were telling me when we were going to the uh, the audio store the other day. Where that lady was about to retire from Look, bro. the correct dude. You oh gotta God. tell Come that on story. Justin. That Come is a on. good Let's story. Th- this is for another time. No, 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 no. Come on. No, no, no. Justin. Come on. We got Will here, dude. He can chime in on this. If you were a dwarf, you'd be bashful. <laughs> Come on, Justin. If if not now, when? <sighs> Jesus Christ. 
This is supposed to be like a special thing between me and the TV. Shut the fuck up. I don't want to talk. <laughs> Justin, shut the fuck uh, up. No one's going to make fun of you. We're no one, gonna no one's going to say anything. A, uh, it's just going to help people uh, want to watch that show, I guess. Or what are you even talking about? Just talk about I mean, it. It's a good show. I don't know. There's, You know, it's like... Uh, what's it called? It's <laughs> called Night. It's called uh, Love After Lockup. And what's it about? It's about like people, like men and women that are on the outside of jail. Like people like us. Mm-hmm. Well... Kind of oh, like yeah, us. We've all been people like yeah, you. Yeah. No, I'm saying like <laughs> people, people that like are not us. in jail. Uh, people like Justin who uh, message inmates. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> send him letters. No way. Got a lady in lockup. I would never. He's I got thought your biceps are so big, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all the pushups you've been doing. It's probably hot. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so basically, it's about people that like are outside of jail, like um, normal people, and then there's people in jail. Well, they're normal people too. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess they Asshole. are. Yeah, you did. To a certain extent. Oh, yeah, like to a certain extent. I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to like bag on anyone. Just for the record, jail. that was David so that said they're normal people. What's like what, a but how about the show? Like, why do you like it? What? I don't know because uh, it's weird to see like people that like are outside of jail. They could just date people like normal people, but they choose to um, write to these inmates, and they get really obsessed with these inmates, see, and they send them money, and they. Oh, I mean, they really yeah. like throw their lives into Maybe talking they feel to bad for them. Dude, did you hear about the woman who just died? She uh, she broke some guy out of jail. She's a prison guard. This oh yeah, is, I was what I was talking with about. It. Yeah, I was this, this is a story oh, this I was wanting to tell you. Yeah, the dude that she broke out is Vicky six foot White. Nine. Yeah, dude. Do you, know I, Do you feel I mean, comfortable talking yeah. about that? No, I, I feel great talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this I, I was <laughs> heavily. We're talking about that. Okay. I was heavily <laughs> obsessed with this story. Yeah, this yeah. Um, corrections uh, woman, the jailer. Well, because you're trying to break your wife out of prison. Right? Well, you gotta learn me? The details. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I guess. <laughs> but no, no. Let's let's talk about this because this has been on my mind for a while. All right, like, let it out. Yeah. I don't let, know. let it out. Here. So, so, let it out. so this jailer, out. she's she's been she's been a jailer for about 17 years. A jailer is that the actual term? Oh, a that's jailer. What they say, a jailer. Is that like a tailor? You mean like a uh, could be. like a like yeah. a correctional <laughs> officer? Instead of tailing your suits, she is she like a corrections officer? Do you mean like that? Jails your youth. Yeah, she's just a jailer, a person that takes care of the jail people. She's a correctional prison officer. guard. Correctional officer. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. prison yeah. guard. Prison, prison guard. guard. Prison guard. Yeah. Okay, we'll go. With she's that. a fucking prison guard, all right? Or jailer. Yeah. Yeah, they they both sound the same. Yeah, just yeah. Put yeah. that out there. <laughs> she's a prison the blacksmith and the candlestick maker not make it. I think so. Anyways, okay. So <laughs> she's, like, flat. she's like she's like four feet tall, little blonde chick. She had no neck. She waddled. She Dude, like the, no the, upper the news too. the news would say she waddled. Yeah, the, I just saw that. Yeah. <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up. That's really like, fucked like, up. Stop like, fun of in her ride. fucking obituary. What does yeah. waddle yeah. mean, she, by the way? Is it like a crab walk, they, right? Like they, like a they give a penguin. Walk. She like a waddles. Oh, like a penguin. Yeah. Yeah. Wah, wah. Yeah. Oh, it's, that's yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Hey, hey, get back in your cell. Hey, hey, hey you penguin, stop waddling. <laughs> Don't run away from me. Don't run. Uh, Don't make God chase bless you. Her. I'm out. So, so she was waddling yes. to the cell. So she. she <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh shit. She was and what a happened next? She was a waddler. <laughs> she was a waddler, but uh, yeah, she was this tiny like little blonde chick. This is in Alabama. Tiny little blonde chick. She was a, she was a um, a jailer. Mm-hmm. And uh, she be she became um, intimate or I don't know intimate sexually love. active. Uh, she, she became in love, love with this j- this uh, inmate, and mm-hmm. this dude's like he's like six five or no, six, six six nine dude six, six nine. nine. Dude's six a fucking yeah. monster. Yeah, and this Jesus guy looks Christ. gnarly too. These are like fucking swastikas and shit all over him. He's he like, looks did like you say a he was really in there tall for like he murdered someone. He yeah, murdered, he murdered a fifty six year old woman. Mind you, this chick that he was dating in prison the yeah. jailer was 55 ah she had a good life wow right? so he murdered what some woman fuck? yeah dude this dude, is gnarly have dude. you guys seen prison break i've never oh. seen a girl six oh, yeah. nine. A great show. no 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 i've like had a girl really like, i've done six nine like with a girl but i've never seen a girl that's six nine no no she was five, like four feet tall he was six nine. Oh, sh- he was six he nine. was six the rapper okay that makes sense yeah no god damn it so, anyways, so her, so she was gonna, she was going to retire from jail from her job. Mm-hmm. The day that she was retiring, she broke him out of jail. They took off, right? Mm-hmm. And and they went on a run for like eleven days. And it's like this chick's fucking. What are you, are you putting shit on me? 
the, the, this chick's like 5'5", five five, he's 6'9". How are you going to get away with this shit, dude? You can't get away. You can't. There's no escape. There's no escape. Not from the not waddling. Crowd. Not from the waddling jailer. A <laughs> guy, a 6'9 guy and a 5'5". Five five, that just sounds almost so ironic. Like 6'9", 5'5". Five five, yeah. Like in and, and, and they both had the same last name, White. Yeah. Wait, were so, they? And they weren't related. They weren't at all? No, well, did, did they may, do a 23 me? Maybe they were related. But okay. I mean, it was Alabama. <laughs> you never know these days. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Sorry to like, our what are you viewers. thinking, dude? You work at this job for 17 years and you break a fucking guy out that murdered someone. On your last day. On your last day of work. On your last day of work. Well, you, I mean, he fucking murdered a woman. Dude, think about sold, what everyone does on the last day. She sold her house and used she that sold to her buy house. them escape cars. Yeah. 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 Like, this is, then, like, mind-boggling. But that's a solid investment. Are, are they Cars? still on the loose? No, no. So what happened was, is they were staying at this motel in Indiana. They yeah. went to Indiana. And um, someone reported them. And so the FBI and everybody was closing in on them. How did they know who it was? Really, dude? She's, she's <laughs> like, I think five, 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 he's like That's a good point. Tall, yeah, a six right? nine dude with swastika tattoos. Yeah. yeah, he sounds kind of like I might be able to. Like he stands, stands out. So yeah. He stands yeah. out. He's, 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 yeah. he's with the yeah. penguin from Batman. Yeah, because there's so many people that are like seven feet tall. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so they were so they were driving and they realized the cops were behind them and they fucking the cops like drove him into a ditch. The chick fucking blows her brains out. Like realizes like oh shit the chicks the chicks like oh fuck we're getting captured she blows her fucking brains out he was like she blows she her died. brains out he was like nah I'm not doing that shit and they catch him she's like nah this shit. bitch crazy I ain't yeah. blowing my brains out fuck that. <laughs> I I'll, I'll go back to prison I've already so been there for ten years for I wish August. she was still alive could we get her on the podcast she's already put all the so money in my books <laughs> all See that what the fuck was going through her head for yeah some sweet pussy really sad actually. Could, yeah, dude, it, it is really sad. Because if you really think about it, it's like a long, it's like a, a long lost love connection. Yeah, it's like Romeo and Juliet. Happen. Romeo and Juliet. Except she blows her brains out, and he. Except survives. it's fucking Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, right. right? So but, I mean, but that's did, crazy. Did she, did, but the, the crazy part about this whole story is, did she really think that, that they were going to get away? Well, the other ones I, always do. I I think maybe I mean. Because, like, really, really she probably... There were so many odds against them. Man. She would, Dude, this guy probably brainwashed her. Oh, yeah, yeah. guaranteed. He probably, like, was, like, my She was probably lonely like, and, and, like, all that shit. But how, like, how long do you think they were messaging each other two for? Two years. They were... they were, she, And she would go visit him at jail at because he got transferred into her, her oh. deal. Oh, oh wait, go, I heard about this. Yeah, and she, she would go oh, visit yeah. him. And it's like, dude, this is crazy. How, how are these red flags weren't coming up in the system? Like, would they ever yeah. get intimate with each other? Like, would they find times to, like... Well, they probably fucking like, hey, you know, we're all doing bath time now. Like, let's let's slip time for another strip search. Yeah, 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 yeah. Search. I don't know. Can we go to the closet, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, could you imagine? Or he just probably wrecked that thing. He probably yeah. he probably oh, wrecked. Yeah. That. Maybe maybe he's the reason she waddles. Dude, <laughs> that, was the, that was the fucked up part. Like in, in the news, they would always put in like parentheses. That was good. That was good. Yeah, she would she's waddle out of probably the jail. waddling. Just after roasting that. her on the fucking yeah. news. That's so fucked up. Like she looked weird. And then she waddled, and it's just like, oh, my God. And the only reason they said that, too, remember, guys, is whenever people do do stuff that is out of the blue, that is wild, on the news, they will characterize you. They will judge you. And, I mean, that is kind of what the news frame is used for, is for them to contradict and judge other people's actions and to making a bigger solution of what the hell is happening. People who watch the news. news. We're not judging them. We love her. For whatever she's doing, we think she's badass. Fuck, I wish she bailed me out of jail when I was in jail. But hey, you know what? You know, I think, I think, no matter, I think <laughs> no matter what, it's kind of a G if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. She's kind of a queen, dude. She, I think that's the type yes, of girl you want. Queen. That's, the, that's a ride or die girl right yeah. there, man. Shit. Yeah. It's a ride or die. She's a ride or die Shit. for sure, dude. <laughs> you know, you I know what's that interesting? Life. Yeah. I think no matter what you do in this world, there's always going to be people who despise you and who follow you. You know, yeah. like Dude, if you, you don't have Hitler. haters, yeah, get some more, man. Yeah, but you could Cat be Williams. I, you could be I, I got told the best thing. If you don't have, if if you don't, if everyone likes you, you're not doing something right. Right. Because yeah. you know, in reality, even being a skater, like I don't expect everyone to like me. I don't want everyone to like me. Like I don't. I don't like you. You're better. I'm gonna. Than I'm gonna be better than Is I can be. I'm gonna like be you? better uh, a version of myself towards anyone, but I won't allow that to contradict who I am as a person. Yeah. So reality. I don't care if people like me or not. And that's kind of the attitude I have now. But I've noticed, like, people are like, oh, are they going to like me? Like, you know, or is everyone really like me? Like, no, hell no, no one's going to like you. Don't even think about that. No one likes you. There's, well, there's you're a, a very likable guy, though. I don't think so. There's are you a good, serious? Yeah, maybe with you guys because I'm nice to you guys, but I'm not nice to everybody. Really? Yeah, like, if you're, if, like, someone comes at me all weird, like, 
you know when you go to like certain places like in your skating like certain dudes they kind of kook out and they'll just like you're kind of like, street though so you kind of have that yeah, mentality where it's, street mentality yeah. yeah i think you go to a bunch of different people and everyone would have a different like opinion on you you yeah. know what i mean like and this goes for everybody but you know imagine the people you meet during the day sometimes maybe you meet them at the wrong time and maybe they meet you at the wrong time right and th they could be like oh this guy you know i see him a lot after work and he's very quiet or he's very like he seems very like tired all the time yeah versus you see someone um you know doing something you love and they're like this guy is really like he's happy he loves what he's doing all the time like we're all so different and he, people change so much throughout like even the day al um, almost yeah, I and like, interactions that, like so sure. you're never gonna get i mean hopefully you know if, if you're being genuine you get like a general perspective on like mm. pe people's opinions on you but dude you're always you're never gonna have anyone who's just like yeah he's amazing dude, it's that true guy's though because i, I nice. only really only you, only my ex-girlfriends can say that well yeah <laughs> all ex-girlfriends hate, <laughs> hate me probably he laid the pipe down pretty good yes yeah, yeah. they still think i'm amazing but i just can't date right now so. yeah yeah dating's hard man you know especially out here dating's hard dude oh in california you know yeah. I, I, you think you think so in california yeah what do you what do you think out here so you new york <laughs> talk about new york and talk about here for dating scene Okay, well, dating in New York was pretty easy. It was just like, uh, okay, the best way to put it is I remember I walked into a coffee shop and, you know, there's this girl wearing like, I don't know, like these fishnets and she had like these like horror movie tattoos and I, I just made a comment. I was like, damn, uh, I wish I could be your nightmare before Christmas. And oh, then uh, slick as hell. she fucking literally just grabbed me into her apartment which is literally a block what? down we what? banged next thing you know we started dating oh, oh shit out here's oh, a little it. different you know i met this girl and we you had to go we started trials. doing yoga and like she, she had <laughs> like healthy and shit being she's healthy like, so she's yeah trying to get you on that uh, <laughs> vegan diet yeah, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> you're all jumping literally, through the hoops dude loops hoops Fuck, fucking dude. vegan food yeah um, but I think the difference is, is uh, New York people don't really give a fuck. It's like, boom, boom, I know what I want. She d does what she wants. It's making it happen. Out here, it's a little bit more. You think the girls are more picky? Out here, the girls are more picky because there's more oh, people. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I mean versus New York, you mean? More people that are on the market. More options. If, I, yeah. I really believe in California, there are a lot more open-minded people. So, like, when it comes to relationships, like, you have an opportunity to find a girl that actually works out for you instead of, like, me, you know, obviously being in New York, I just see a girl with hard movies and fishnets. I'm like, okay, that's what I'm going for. I don't even know if she's nice, you yeah. know, but like, yeah, I think in, I think they're both the same market. It's just out here, you have to be a little bit more like easygoing. For sure. More in New chill. York, I don't have to be easygoing. I could be. You can be rough. And you I can be, be rough. Like up front. Up front, and they like that. W was uh, it hard for you to. Was it like a weird transition? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I, a little bit, yeah, at the first time, but, uh, you know, really what happened was when I first came out here, I met this chick that owned a mansion nice. and, and oh, she I had a maid, about that, yeah. you know, did so you wife her up? No, I wiped her up for maybe a few months and then, Ooh, nice. uh, skate, I wasn't able to skate as much. So I had to let that go, obviously just for skating purposes. But I mean, I, I had it, I had it pretty good. And I say I was good. I had a good welcoming of yeah, California good thing girls. Going. Yeah. Did you ever have a lot of people like trying to deter you from uh, from skating, or did you get more like support from from people around you? It was a fifty fifty bargain. Fifty fifty. Yeah. So it's sometimes How do you mean by even that? in remember I, I I was telling you I'd be in Rhode Island like yeah um I'd have OGs coming up to me saying yeah dude like because I used to do concrete work they'd say dude you're an amazing oh, nice. you know masonry like you you, you should be more in a concrete than skating you're not gonna make any money mm -hmm. off skating well I'd be like. Well, I didn't expect to make a thousand dollars each week off skating. I just expected to make enough to live, and I can, you know, do what I want to do. But yeah. you know, when you go to certain cities, people kind of look down on that. Have so. you ever thought about um, building skate parks? Those uh, guys yeah. who do that, like, uh, like I remember warm out skate parks. You know, Definitely. I would follow these guys, and like, honestly, if I ever got into concrete, like I've worked with a few concrete uh, like crews before too. Not not with them, but like, yeah. you know, alongside them on on jobs. And uh, I always thought, you know, if I could do that. And like do something I love to like building skate parks like the stuff that you like. So have you ever been to the um, the Mike Fox skate park? Have you ever been to Santa Cruz before? Yeah, I have. That's the one with the, uh, the loop. full pipe. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, imagine the process of building that full pipe, <sighs> and like just being there for that process and knowing that you built that. Like that must be so rewarding and fun. And, and how it's still holding to this yeah. day. Oh yeah. Well, and it brings the community together, you know. Yeah. It, like the, the kids and everything. Yeah. But like if you're good at concrete, or if you brings at, if, the kids. Yeah. Together, if sure. you're good at that, like why not put that and mix it with another passion of yours? And like you know, you could be designing skate parks essentially. You know. That would be the goal. 
you know, eventually, um, I have helped build a few skate parks. Um, mm. I helped d- do some concrete at a spot in, uh, where was that at? Wakefield. And, uh, basically it's called OMF Skate Park. OMF? Yep. Old Mountain Field. And oh, I nice. basically did a, a, a few of the ramps there when they were building the new addition to the skate park. And then also in New York, I just helped build a few DIYs. But in reality, yeah, I would love to uh, get more into that. Any yeah. any tips for anyone out there who, who wants to maybe build their own DIY? Like maybe they have a little spot and they want to get some concrete. Do you have any tips for like people out there? Yeah. So for tips for anyone who's trying to go out and build a DIY and basically, you know, have something where you and your boys can skate. I would say find a really desolate location <coughs> where no one's going to see you. Mm-hmm. And somewhere that's kind of abandoned, and just have a solid crew, lots of beers. Uh, definitely have a speaker. You're gonna need that. Hell yeah, for morale. <laughs> spliffs, yeah. In- indeed. I need spliffs. So I'm gonna build well, a skate park. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I think some of it's the most creative. fun skate parks are the ones that are DIY. Yeah, like we had so a great one called Spotty. I grew up. I grew up yep. like two blocks from this really good one in up near Half Moon Bay, which is it's like an hour north of San Francisco or. Uh, Santa Cruz, sorry. Yep. It was this little, like, abandoned, like, uh, house foundation. It's called Spotty. And, I don't know, it was sick. People had, li- there was, like, a, a quarter pipe that looped around. There was a big spine in the middle. There was a couple, there was uh, a couple camel boxes. Hunts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun. And then someone, like, built, like, up onto the grass behind it, like a roll-in. Oh, and whoa. Yeah, and it was, you know, it was basically, like, there were two groups. It was, like, kids in middle school who would go and skate, and then adults who would go and skate and smoke weed and then uh i don't know the county got pissed about it demolished it and now people just go there and do drugs there's like there now there's well no that's actually why they demolished it huh remember my, my mike uh uh, uh was it salcedo mike mm-hmm. salcedo he was a a well-known person there and he would cause trouble yeah well uh, so they were they w- their job or their goal with destroying the skate park was to get people to stop doing drugs but people were doing then drugs. it turned into like doing drugs. now it's just now there's just homeless <laughs> yeah. people doing drugs there like awesome. that's that's the whole it's just back culture really counterintuitive yeah, it's literally it used to yeah. be kids skating Such a back it, was, fire. it was like i don't know four or five good years of my childhood i was there almost every day skating but i think but now it's nothing one of the interesting things uh we so pretty recently within the last couple of years we had a skate park built you know where yep. we where we used to have an old park. It was kind of you know it was it was the wooden ramps on like really rough concrete, right? So I mean, I remember just like rolling around. It was super hard to roll, gain speed, all that stuff. So we finally had a um, like the city intervened and we had this all this stuff going down for a new park. And um, at the end of the, all of this, they built the park and it ended up not quite being what people wanted. You know, even though they had all this outreach and, and it's still a sick park, like the bowl is pretty sick and mm-hmm. like but the layout, they didn't quite go with, with maybe like what the community wanted. And some of the stuff they did to the to the concrete to pr- almost like preventative maintenance ended up making the park like very slippery. It was kind of like a, a, gr- a green sheen. on. Oh, it. I, don't, I don't I hate that. It's skate. Parks. And they did. And you know what? Yeah, it's still dude. cracked. Yeah, and it's still cracked, and now it's just slippery. So every time yeah. you, you build your line, you, you take your line. You, you can't rely on that line because mm. you're just gonna slide out at every every angle. Yeah, um, and I think that's the one thing with a lot of places. Like when the city tries to get involved, I think they just kind of, oh, you know, we're just gonna do this, and we're gonna build what we think people want, and then it ends up, you know, because then it, you end up wasting resources, and uh, you know, not to say that it, no, again, not to say it's a bad park, but. I think it could have been a little bit better designed, yeah. As far as parks go for the space, but right. um, you know, you're always going to have that those professional built parks and those DIY parks. I think that's kind of cool about the whole thing, and obviously street street spots too. But and I, yeah, and DIY, you know, just to put that out there, it's um, it's a lot more raw of a scene. You know, there's even skateboarded zines that are made for just the DIY scene of skateboarding. Oh, no kidding, huh? Barrier cult. A lot of these different dudes that are out there um, up north where you guys are talking about. Uh, I know that they got a lot of different types of, like, crews where, you know, they have these zines that I would check out. And it was super rad because there's just all these random DIYs around California that were, like... Are you saying zines, like, magazine? Yeah, no. yeah. So, like, a magazine, but, like, in a, in a really small scale. So, mm-hmm. like, kind of like a pamphlet. Okay, yeah. That's sick. But it would be, like... Um, like solitude zine, cemental zine. There's like a lot mm-hmm. of different ones. Um, shout out to the zine people out there. We yeah, fuck with you, dude. 
keep I doing wish that there shit. There was more of that. Right. Kind of went away. Yeah. And it, it's great. I love. Love that it's coming magazines. back. Yeah, man. It's like kind of an '80s vibe, right? It is. Yeah, '80s, '90s. It was big. Yep. Um, I, I was really good friends with uh, Kevin Thatcher. Shout out to Kevin Thatcher. Um, he started. Shout out. He started Thrasher Magazine. He was one of my neighbors. And oh no yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He what was a, a great small guy. world. Mm-hmm. Shout yeah. out. Uh, rest, shout out to uh, Jake Phelps. Rest in peace. Oh yeah. R.I.P. I got a good story about uh, Jake Phelps that he oh, told no me about. Jake Let's Phelps. hear about it. Yeah. Let's yeah. uh, get into it. Yeah. yeah. So Kevin Thatcher started Thrasher Magazine and. Um, up in San Francisco, and he was driving down the street one day, and, and I think Jake Phelps was on the uh, street corner. I think he was just chilling, mm-hmm. maybe uh, panhandling or something. And uh, Kevin Thatcher rolls up to the uh, the street light, and he looks at him. He goes, "Hey, what's going on?" And they start they start kind of bullshitting, and uh, told him about the magazine and stuff. And long story short, he made him the you know the the editor of Thrasher. So then Jake Phelps took over. Oh wow! Yeah, he kind of, you know, I wouldn't say give it, gave it, gave him the magazine, but um, uh, made him the editor, and he was the editor for until he died. Wow! Talk yeah. about a big break, dude. Dude, yeah, it was crazy. It's lucky. Yeah. yeah, and Kevin Thatcher is one of the one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. Um, he helped. I, I used to have a mini ramp in front of my house, mm-hmm. um, and he helped me build that. And he, he, you know, it was funny because uh, Lords of Dogtown when they did the mm-hmm. documentary. Um, he they interviewed him at at our house and so it, uh, my, oh, my, my house the house that i was living in at the time was in lords of dogtown oh that's cool yeah that's and, so uh, cool dude it was it was pretty that's rad cool. and, and, and like i saw the first press he had the first press on you know the magazine um mm-hmm. on his wall and i mean if you want to talk about a legend dude kevin thatcher is a legend not not many people know about kevin thatcher he's kind of one of those like no effects you know the punk band yeah right where it's like right. They, mm-hmm. they never you know i mean people know about him and some people don't know about them but they're just legendary you know Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he, he's, he is skateboarding, you know, mm-hmm. you know, he created, Dude, I mean, Thrasher magazine is like, he created, everyone, yeah. everyone knows that. I it's mean, like worldwide. Tony Hawk and Thrasher are the two biggest yeah, it's, names. And but it's funny. You would, you would, you know, no. you would never yeah. even recognize him walking down the street. You know, nobody yeah. knows about Kevin Thatcher. They know about Jake Phelps, but like nobody knows about Kevin Thatcher. And it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, man. All the stories he'd tell me. And I remember one time I was up in Santa, you know, I was in Santa Cruz and there's this, there's a shop that would, um, it was called, uh. FSC, mm-hmm. and um, the guy had a lot of skateboard decks from the 80s, like original 80s skateboard decks, mm-hmm. in a warehouse, and he would sell them out of his, his skate shop, and I remember going in there one time, and I, I, I found a really cool deck that I liked, and um, and I bought it, and I took it home, and I wa- there was these, uh, I was walking down my driveway, and Kevin Thatcher and this other guy was sitting on the, on the porch, and I came up to Kevin, and I go, hey, dude, uh, I just got this deck, dude. I'm super psyched on it. Like, check it out, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, that's cool. And the guy sitting next to him, he goes, that's my deck. Oh, I go, you're no fucking shit. kidding no me, way. dude. And he's like, yeah, that's my deck. And I'm like, this is an original from the 80s. He's like, no way. He's like, where did you get that thing at? I told him and everything. And he signed it. And it was cool. It was like little experiences like that where it's Sick, like, dude. it was cool. Like, so many stories and, and you know, from, from skating in the 80s and 90s and that's um, sick. Yeah, it was me and me and David growing up had kind of the same type of like like small town, but a lot of big names. But mm-hmm. for surfing, like we yeah. grew up around, you know, Jeff Clark was our boss for a couple of years. Like right. all these uh, big pro surfers were yeah. just walking in and out. of Tim town. West. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the interesting thing about that is like there's a lot of big names too, but there, it's there's a lot of people who charge on those days or just uh, like day to day, but they're a lot more like. You know, just local local hometown heroes you mm-hmm. know what i mean mm-hmm. and that's pretty rad I, I think i really like that community about the, the surfing yeah. in half and bay is like yeah, all the people who surf there day to day and then really perform on those big days but don't quite get the limelight yeah i think it's really cool you know knowing all those guys like personally what's what's the guy's name um that surfs out there that's just super humble oh ben andrews no 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 the guy that uh, when we were at opl oh uh tall guy Oh, Grant Washburn. Oh, yes. yes. Grant Wa- dude, one of the dude, nicest yeah. people. Do- one oh. of the best Do- Doesn't look like a surfer at all. Time. all. Yeah. I mean, the guy doesn't look like a surfer. And, and like a you know, surfer. being out there with him, he, he, is, he, is, he will just put you in the right spot. He'll tell you, hey, this is why you have to be here. Yeah. Look at the lineups. Look at all the triangulation. Mm. I mean, he knows he is there. Surfs some of the biggest waves mm-hmm. in the fucking world. If there's world, even a little bam, bump, he's out know. there surfing. Yeah. You know, if there's just anything, he, he's just 
He's so about it. And super humble, super nice. Yeah. Like, just, and he charges, and yeah, he gets some of the best charges, waves. Charges, dude. Yeah. And he's a big dude. Some of the names that come through there, dude. Like, I've met Evan Slater. I've met Kai Lenny. I've met... Uh, uh, I met, I've met Twiggy. Yeah, I've, I got there. a photo with Twiggy Kai Baker Lenny. and Kai, 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 dude, Kai Lenny. Do you know Kai Lenny? Lenny? He's he surfed the uh, the heavy water. Um, it was like a contest, a race in, in Ocean Beach, and when he finished that, I think he won it. He ended up paddling out to Mavericks, and he was surfing Mavericks at the end of that race. <laughs> oh, and wow. I remember, David, dude, so he's a beast. We were out in the lineup, and we saw him, and we're like, dude, didn't you just have a race today? He's like, yeah, man, yeah, I fuck, I think I won. We're like, holy <laughs> shit, dude. He's like Shane Dorian, And he's dude. surfing, yeah. Sh- Shane Dorian Shane would Dorian. surf Jaws. Yeah, was, he would yeah. surf Jaws, and get Greg, on an airplane, surf Mavericks. Like, yeah. damn. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, dude. He would surf like That's fucking wild. four, so four times Same. overhead Jaws, <laughs> get on an air, literally get on an airplane, and then surf Mavericks. What do you think about Nick Lamb? I know he's a Santa Cruz boy. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, do you yeah. think about him? He's dope, man. Yeah. I, mean, I, I remember there was a there was there was a time when he was wearing all the tuxedos yeah. and people were like this guy dude yeah nick nick lamb's sh- you know shout out to nick lamb he's he's sick dude um dude, i, I remember that up, photo of him at flea, um, skin dog. Dude, i grew up i grew up around flea and 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 rap boy and all those guys yelling at me in the water and all that shit and when i worked for stretch um rap boy was was uh you know, um, writing for Stretch and oh, that's right. You work for Stretch. Yeah, huh? yeah. that's crazy. Work for dude. Stretch and like Rap Boy would come in and you know, like out in the water, he'd yell at me. But like, he, and, and then when he realized I was working for Stretch and I was working on his boards, you know, it, it like, changed. Oh shit, he might. Yeah, he might uh, cut some corners if I. No, it was mad. cool. It was cool. It was cool because then, then he didn't yell at me Board in the water just breaks anymore. In half. Yeah, yeah, he didn't yell at me in the water and like uh, you Nat Young. Pass. I worked on Nat Young's fucking boards when he, when he was a child. I surfed with Nat Young. A couple He's times. Dude, he rips. Yeah, I competed against um, Ben Coffey. Mm-hmm. I knew. Uh, I, yeah. I met Kanoa Igarashi surfing a couple times. He rips. He's, I dude, watched he's, him. He's I watched one of the best him on the tour right dude, now. Dude, I watched him surf at the Pismo Pier mm-hmm. um, when he was a child. Yeah, I child. surfed with him. I surfed with him at uh, the north end of Old Man's when we were both like eleven. He's the same age as me. Oh, is he? Yeah, dude, I surfed that's with crazy. him when we were well, eleven that dates or me. twelve. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, dude, he. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember watching that kid surf at the Pismo Pier and going. Fuck, he rips. He must have been like six, seven years old or something like that. He had the record for most NSSA, which is like the that's like the high school surf league. So basically, he had the record for the most wins in a season. I believe it when he was like fifteen. I, so I believe that. Yeah. yeah, I knew that kid was gonna be a superstar, yeah. dude. And he got he got a rookie of the year his first year on tour, and now he's like third place. I think. Yeah, he's so good. Third like place in the, world, right? in the world, right? Yeah. Wow, dude, yeah, he's what a place. Best. When he was like six years old, <laughs> fucking he was just ripping, yeah, dude. seriously, yeah, damn, he's, he's solid, man. He's like Chloe and Dino. Oh yeah, you know, like dude, I've been I've been surfing out with Chloe at Salt Creek, and he fucking went up for an air, and I was I was like eleven years old, just in the wrong spot, and he fell and hit me with his board. <laughs> That's my Kalohe and Get out of that fucking water, water that cool. Fucking ball, dude. I was just an 11 year old. Beat it, cool. Shit, yeah. <laughs> the wrong spot. Yeah, I kicked oh, it hard. Oh, man. Well, at least you cooked it hard in front of, like, Kalohe and Yeah, I'd rather be Kalohe than nobody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some, Some random ass guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you serve uh, Will? Uh, Willie? Yep. Willie? I know you want to be called Willie. Uh, well, no, my name is Willie. Uh, and yeah. yes, I do surf now. Yeah, yep. you do now. You do. Sick. Yeah. Uh, what kind sorry, of, what it was kind of board you got? Um, well, I just actually use my friend's board uh, at the surf shop. Mm-hmm. Call it PB Surf Shop. Um, yep. Those are the homies. They'll let me run out basically longboard to shortboard. So. I remember that. That's, that's how, how you guys met, met you. right? That's how we I met. Remember, yeah. I remember oh shit! Meeting you and oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was that was good. That was a cool place to work, man. Yeah, I've n- I never worked there, but it looked like a solid squad, solid time. Yeah, pretty that, good. And uh, yeah, dude. I remember. I remember you when you take out the boards. I'm like, oh, let's see what this guy's got, dude. That was funny. And then you told me about your skating, and I remember, like, looking you up and be like, oh, shit, like, this guy's legit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get legit on a surfboard, but uh, slowly and gradually, uh, you know. They, they definitely yeah. complement each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's nice yeah. when you have a long day of skating. You got a 10-hour day, and you wake up in the morning, and you just can go it's to the lot, water. And it's a lot nicer to fall on the board, on a uh, surfboard, than on mm-hmm. a skateboard. Do you oh. think it's harder to – do you think it's harder, a lot harder? Uh, on the ground and a skateboard, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're hitting concrete, it, you know, unless you're used Come to on, it, it, hurts it a little bit more. No, I'm <laughs> saying, do you think like surfing skating is versus harder surfing. Than skating? Oh, s- I would say surfing's harder because skating think, is like very consistent. I think skating is more consistent because you can do it all day, every day. But I would say surfing, 
You know, actually, my first time surfing, I already I caught like five waves. So I don't know. I felt like oh nice, sad, okay, dude. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. It was just like kind of into you, huh? Like you, you already kind had of that, in my blood. that ability. If you can yeah. skate yeah. a bowl, you can you can surf. That's surf. what I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dodge a wrench. When I skated a bowl after surfing, it was like almost like perfect perpendicular. You know, you can just like carve up and yeah, yeah so sick. Yeah, those so. top turns are just they're the same. They're the same. Fucking awesome. I always remember uh, like you know one of the biggest things for skating was learning frontside airs. And I remember feeling like, you know, when you get over that coping and you land it, you're like, oh, fuck, like, that was awesome. I wonder if I can do that on, you know, on a board, on a surfboard. Yep. And uh, it's always a little harder because the surfboard's so big and, you know, you're, I don't know, it's just like you got to time it perfectly. Well, you look at, like, Grayson Fletcher. Oh, my God, right. dude. Right. Shout out he Grayson is Fletcher. He's my fucking favorite. All he's, dude, he's goat. He's goat. Justin just creamed himself. I just, I just creamed my jeans. <laughs> well, because you know what? Because you know what? My, my favorite oh. surfers were Christian and Nathan Fletcher. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Nathan surfed for fucking stretch. And, like, then when Grayson came out, dude, he just, he's on next level shit, dude. Are they yeah. the, they're the Astrodex yes. family? Yes. So, I, yeah, I came dude. down to, uh, to San Clemente with, with my buddy on yes. like a little camping trip once. And he's like, dude, Astro Deck is here. I really want to g- stop by and see if we can see if we can meet, uh, you know, Christian, Christian and Fletcher. Fletcher. And yeah. dude, so we look up Astro Deck and we, we fucking, we drive all the way out. It was like 20 minute drive from our campsite or whatever. And we're like at these, they're warehouse. all there. Well, we're at these warehouse buildings and we walk in and the only person in there is like this lady who looks like like Dolly Parton type. Right? That's their like, mom. Yeah, and yeah. and she's like, "Oh, this isn't a store. You're at our warehouse." Yeah. Right now. So we we met we met the mom of the family, yeah. but no shit. But we were Her, not Herbie right Fletcher. <laughs> yeah. What's her, what's her name? It's like. Oh is God. It like, I can't. R- it's not a weird one. Yeah. Like Dot. Dot. Dotty. I think it's Dotty. Yeah. yeah. And Herbie is yeah. the dad. Dotty and Herbie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Nathan Fletcher. Nathan's yeah. like Nathan's my insane, all time dude. like favorite yeah. surfer. OG. He's insane, dude. I met him a couple times. Clay Marzo's mine. Shout out. Clay, Clay Marzo's Love sick. But Nathan's just like, dude, doing those fucking acid drops off like the lane and like yeah. Black yes. Beach and Santa Cruz. Fuck. Well, dude, he just fun. rips. That was weird. But Grayson, dude. Grayson. Dude. So, yeah, he's he's an all terrain vehicle. Like literally all terrains. It could be, what is it? Raw earth, water. Yeah, so like Fucking his his skating's sick. out of this world, and then he just gets on a surfboard and he just rips. He's just he just got it. I think it's like one of those people who are just in his blood. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, they're just born with it. Yeah, that's so rad. I'm a hype to be on, on the same team as Grayson. Have Shout you out. have you met him? I haven't met him. Oh, okay. Actually, no, I met him once when he had a really big beard, and I think he like shaved his head. So this was yeah. like you know prior a few years ago. But um, yeah, I remember meeting him and. Fucking just solid, dude. You know, super nice guy. Didn't even know how good of a surfer he was until I was watching his videos. And I was like, oh shit! Like he's like, uh, he does it all, multi-dimensional. He you is, know? man. Yeah. So rad. I remember watching him when I was a kid. He'd so Christian Fletcher used to live in Indo for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he'd fly out and he would meet up with him and they'd make these videos. Dude, he would skate at these parks as a child, just fucking ripping. Jeez. Ripping, man. I bet. Yeah, and I was like, dude, this kid's gonna go somewhere, man. Like, obviously, yeah, it comes from that family, but and then nowadays it's like, holy moly, yeah. I can't, yeah. I, it's it's a whole other world when you see people that are that good at a bunch of different stuff, right? You know, yeah, yeah. It's cool, man. Do you do you have a lot of um like we? I remember one of the first times I met you, I was like, yeah, Darren Navarrete. Like, do you, do you skate with him? Uh, yeah. So. Shout out Darren. Um, yeah, I used to, when I first moved out to San Diego, uh, I would basically go skate the boardwalk. I, I remember all you guys down there. On Big Wednesday? Yeah, dude. Dude, man, let me tell you, Big Wednesday, Jesus. that was a fucking vibe. We um, we held it down for the Mission Bay in, you know, Pacific Beach community. And, you know, basically he would bring out some ramps mm-hmm. and he'd bring out uh, a guitar and then there'd be like a drum set. And then it was just so rad. Like, you would get there, and everyone's just basically skating, setting up ramps, making all these crazy things. And, you know, it was really be- behind the mastermind Darren because, you know, Darren was doing that even before I even pulled up. Or yeah. He was doing that, like, back in the day, I remember, you know. So, yeah, no, that was super cool, man. Like, just to see, like, that whole community of San Diego, like, in one place. Like, everyone was just going. There was a lot of dudes out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was insane. Rippy. Fucking no, no. What is rippage. this? What is 
So during Maybe during co- like during COVID. Right? During COVID, yeah, yeah. During COVID, like on the boardwalk. Twenty twenty. Yeah, twenty twenty. Oh, on the boardwalk, they'd set up ramps on the walls on the boardwalk. Really. And and dude, it'd be like fifty skaters out there just fucking shredding. Oh shit! Were the skate parks like closed and shit here? The law, the law. Uh, no, but it was like they were basically like they needed a place where they could bring a bunch of people together yeah. and like. Honestly, like it was a great location because at the boardwalk where it was, it was just like I don't know, like you could just kind of do whatever you want in that area. It's between Mission Beach and Pacific. Yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah, in the yeah. middle. It's like kinda. a no man's land yeah. almost. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Yeah, it was rad. Oh, what's he? That's what's dope. he called? The Flying Vampire? Oh, uh, the Vertical Vampire. The Vertical Vampire. Yeah, dude, he's Creatures uh, Manager now, right? Yeah, well, he's uh, been like that for a while. He's pretty much a yeah, Creatures Manager. I think Creatures Skateboards, like Scout, almost, but yeah. like. Yeah, he, he pretty much, I, I really feel like, is the mastermind behind Creature and also Skeleton Key. Nice. So. Shout out to Skeleton Key. Yeah, yeah, shout out Skeleton Key. Fucking super solid brand, super good homies. All the okay. homies are on them. So, yeah. Okay. You know what skate videos I love watching are, like, the, the Halloween Hell Bombs. You ever watch those? Yeah, those that are, was uh, pretty so rad. Simple. That was in San Francisco. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I actually never attended any of those, but uh, damn, I wish I did. Those are cool. It's, like, a bunch of people who dress up in their Halloween costumes, and they just bomb a hill, and people will put, like, ramps. I've seen like someone put their convertible in the middle of the road and people were like going off a kicker grinding on the windshield and continuing <laughs> down. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> no way. Dude, I don't think I've seen these videos. Wow. Yeah, just like a Halloween, Halloween hell bomb. bomb. Check yeah. them out. No yeah. That's dope. We had a, that we sounds had a buddy, dope. Uh, yeah, it was insane. Miles? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Miles was super into that. Shout out to Miles. Uh what's his what's his Instagram? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Miles. Uh, we'll figure that out. But yeah, he does. He, I remember he was getting so into those hill bombs. His his truck wheel or his wheels would be like just barely over the bearing, you know. Like so, you have the bearing and then you have the wheel, and he would just like slide them out so hard that they would just all the way down grind the it down to the nub almost, you know. Wow. Um, he was the only guy I've seen too with the skate trucks that actually like he cracked them because he would grind on them so hard on the coping on pool coping that they would just like wear down to like nothing and then they would just snap off like hmm. the truck would snap off oh, you know yeah. these, are, these are just like indies yeah these are just indies they're just in- independent you are know? they indies yeah he just grind he grind them so hard i've never seen it before yeah he grind them so hard that. that they just were That's nothing cool. basically you grind it down to the axle and they'd split yeah, half, and they would just right? split, on yeah. the wheel part yeah, on one side of the wheel yeah on one part and i was i'd never seen that before and That's just, nuts, he's a dude. beast dude yeah miles Miles Keaton, man, he's he's a beast. Oh yeah, shout out Miles Keaton. There you yeah. go. Hey, what was that hill that, that around here that they that they um, bombed for Thrasher? This dude bombed this fucking hill over here. Dictionary Hill. Is it? Yeah, is it the one into like like kind of like more like eastern, right? It, oh, I think it's around here, but it's like, dude, it goes down and then it goes like this. Wait, the hill goes down? Oh, Dictionary Hill. <laughs> yep. Dude. So Dictionary Hill. Fucking it's dude. like I I talked to the dude. Um, <laughs> My boy Shane, he does all the, the screen printing for Skeleton Key, and oh, he does yeah. it for Creature too. Uh, he actually told me Dictionary Hill <coughs> was one of the gnarliest hills back in the day. Like, you know, a lot of them would, like, get, get out of school and be, like, looking at the hill and being like, you're going to bomb that? And then Shane would be like, no, nah, you're going to bomb that? And then be like, no, nah, I'm not going to bomb that. Yeah. I mean, that went on for, like, what, like, days <laughs> on days until, like, <laughs> Mel so Martinez came out. And Someone's like, got to put a flag on that hill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this, dude. Like, I want to see it. So what's it called? So it's called what? Is it dic- dictionary is Hill. It, is it Dictionary Hill? Dictionary Hill. Yep. Dude, it's bonkers. Like, if you look at it, it looks like a monsoon. It's like, if it was a, t- a water, the uh, best way to put it, if it was like the end of the world and there was a big wave, that's what it would look like. Dictionary. And it Hill. goes and it goes and it goes and it's like it, it like oh dude. Have you, you guys heard of Signal Hill? Where's that? That's up in that San Francisco. That's up towards L. A. So there's yeah. a there's a good like a really good skate documentary if you guys want something to watch. It's on Red Bull TV. Signal the, Hill. The Signal Hill speed run, and it's like this hill. It was the first like speed runs ever in skating, and people were making like faster and faster longboards to try to break the land speed record. That's it. Oh and shit. I think someone hit like 80 miles an hour on a fucking skateboard. Jesus oh, Christ. Dude. Yeah. And so we have uh, my How do you even stand up on a board going that fast? Shit. Yeah. How did, how did your balls not fall off? Right? Like. Dude, yeah. <laughs> no. And, like, dude, it got to the point where they were they were turning into like, I don't know, like go-karts instead of skateboards. Like where they're, they're laying down on them. I'm going to move the mic, but they're laying down on them like in a coffin. And they've got like, they've got like a, a hole over the top of them. 
So and then I mean they're going they're going 75 80 miles an hour and sometimes they hit the bottom and they just they just crash like they their boards explode they go everywhere. What yeah. do you think the secret is Crazy. to a good hill bomb? Do you think it's loose trucks? Don't go yeah, up. Yeah, I could say the best uh, ingredient for a good hill bomb is push when you get on top of the hill, push as fast as you can. Buckle up. And fucking be ready, basically. Just nut up. Nut up or break up. Because really what happens is, is when you're bombing a hill, your momentum's kicking you back, right? So as long as your your eyes and your head is literally over your board and you're looking more forward and you got your knees bent, you're usually pretty good. But it's almost like surfing. Like when you're bombing a huge wave, you know? Like when you're getting all that speed to get shot, shot out in a barrel, it's like you don't really have too much time to think about it. You're just like boom like i'm there you know yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah I, dude i i had a good i had a buddy and uh his name's omid omid nurpur and uh shout out to omid um dude we <laughs> we had a hill outside our house and uh i i bombed it when i was a little kid and i remember at the bottom falling and eating shit scraping my nose up and so he he yeah. bombed it and uh i was driving my car behind him and i i wish i'd been filming it um but he hit one of those reflectors in the middle of the road, you know? Oh, like, like no, it was like the a yellow thing? Oh, it was like a blue one, but it was a reflector. Same thing, like yeah. the yellow reflectors. And I just remember, like, so actually, funny story. So same thing. We were He was going down skating, and you know um, you know Benji Darrow? Mm-hmm. Benji is walking up the hill. He's a good friend of ours who, uh, who surfs. Yep. He, uh, he's walking up the hill, and he sees Omid, and he goes out for a high five. And Omid, like, kind of kind of carves over to him, tries to high-five him. We're going pretty fast at this point. High-fives him, gets back on track, hits that um, that reflector. And, dude, I've never seen someone get ragdolled, oh like, going down God. the hill like I saw Omid get ragdolled. Like, he went head over heels, just doing spins down the hill. I'm like, oh, my God. Did it look like a yard sale? It was a yard sale, Benji dude. Benji felt bad, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> he, en- he ended up we, – we, we went back to our house, Jesus. got him all cleaned up. <laughs> but, dude, he was like – he had so much road rash. And wow. I wish I had filmed it because it, w- it just didn't even look real. It looked like CGI. Like, you know, like when people are ragdolled? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It looked like that. Like, he did – we were going pretty fast, dude. You know that hill outside my house, the mm-hmm. Ferdinand? Yeah. Yeah, pretty solid hill. You know, you can get going pretty fast. It took me a while to – to actually like work up to the top and go down but uh, once i did that man i mean dude that you go fast on the hill and you're yeah. hoping cars don't come because right. there's, there's, there's an intersection on the bottom yeah. right oh well God. so <laughs> throughout the whole hill there's like i think one there's about three intersections and then at the bottom of the hill there's an intersection and you're just you know it's a smaller smaller neighborhood so you're you know generally you're pretty safe but you never know there's always a car that comes out somehow you know we've got some close calls no we ha- we have a buddy you know kevin harwood this is one of our friends surf surfs mavericks now but he he used to skate a bit back in the day and he's he's bombing a hill and his spotter at the bottom just didn't say shit didn't say enough and kevin comes out at the bottom and just goes over a car's hood jesus like oh. destroyed his elbow still can't surf for very long scarred like it up huh 15 Damn. years later because his elbow is just so messed up from it but yeah it was worth it it was worth it. Yeah. I had a, I had he got a, laid that day. Don't worry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a buddy who was being scouted for a uh, first round draft pick for the NFL. He was fucking. He was in San Clemente. He was or uh, Dana Point. He was fucking skating down a hill, and uh, a fucking at the bottom of the hill, a car came by and fucking hit him. And he fucking fucked up his elbow. I uh, couldn't play football oh, since then. So oh my brutal. god. Was it worth it? Probably not. No, I yeah. probably not. Well, probably he might have heard it in football. No, no, he, he like fucked it up. Like, it was broken, like broke his arm and shit. Fucked up his elbow. But like, if he, did, if he anymore. didn't do his skating, he might have done it doing football. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> like, but at least dude, he, everyone, after the first season, he probably have a couple mil in the bank. You know, <laughs> everyone yeah. who skates has a story like that. Like I've got, a, yeah. I've got a big scar on my hip from it. My brother's Ugh. gone down uh, on Devil Slide when they oh, first yeah. paved that new path. That's he nice bombed path. that shit so fast. And uh, he he caught a rock and like just face planted. He tore up his whole right arm, his whole left side. Like he slid for probably thirty feet on the asphalt. And That's like terrible. Came home like blood soaked through his shirt. Ugh. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I broke my uh, ankle at the jetty. That was fun. The I saw ramp. I saw that skate video that you when you broke your fucking. Oh ankle. yeah. Jeez. We oh, kind of so shimmied a little so vert bad. ramp. Dude. It was so thin. It was just plywood, and so I had to hold on to. I think it was. I think. It Can might have been. Drive me to the hospital? I forget. I forget who it was. <laughs> I think it was Dom Padua. Uh-huh. It was. I think there was one of those guys. Um, I was just holding onto their helmet. Might have been him. Um, and I just, 
as I dropped in, I didn't commit to it. I jumped off my board, and my left leg hit my skateboard. It landed on the board. My board went out from under me, but my right leg was under my body. Mm -hmm. So as I fell, I was just dr dropping vertical, and as I fell, all my weight was put onto my right foot, and it just twisted underneath me. And uh, send the I video to Forrest. Have him put oh. it in the podcast for everyone. Dude, yeah, I, yeah. I remember. I remember, and that that you know what's funny? That was, I think, the second or third day after we got out for summer break. Oh yeah, mm. so you had a broken the yeah. whole foot so for all the of, whole entire summer. All of summer, it was, it was, the, it was the worst summer so I've ever had. Miles <laughs> Keaton once on the jetty ramp, he went for a drop in, bit it at the bottom, like just caught his front wheel, went forward, both bro broke uh, both his arms. She was he Miles was in, he, up, he was dude. in a two like Miles two ca yeah oh, oh my, my god he was in two casts for for months oh my that's god that's terrible dude. that's yeah. 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 That's yeah. Terrible. That is terrible <laughs> fucking can't do anything can't even jerk off yeah you're fucked yeah, yeah. Well, you can't <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure he went and got a lot of massages yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got a <laughs> twice a day <laughs> twice a day massages man that guy I think when I think about most of the people in Happy Way skating I think Miles comes up as uh as one of like the the more like you know and, and him and also uh Miles. luca panese jared yeah panese. oh jared too but uh panese's you know, from pacifica he's from pacifica but There's he was part of the of crew too like yeah. miles would be over in Pas like we would all go to pacifica mm -hmm. I, pacifica yeah, skate I park there all the time growing up i that think you the were there a little bit after i was gone i quit probably high school but quit what quit quit, quit skating, quit skating i went school. back to it for a little bit in college but by then it just hurt too much to fall yeah See, I never really got too much into skating. I mean, you know, where I was, it was fucking cold all the time. I mean, I was a fisherman, so I'm, I'm gone during all the nice weather days where you'd actually get a chance to go out to a fucking skate park. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I would do was uh, we used to fucking tie a rope to the back of my truck, and we used to fucking, like, drive around for the fucking neighborhoods oh, fuck and stuff. Yeah, I've on done that too, on dude. skateboards, have, like, a line yeah. of us going down, yes. holding on to this rope. Dude. Nice. Fucking dope, dude. So the neighbors fun. used to always come outside and fucking start screaming, you fucking idiots, you're going to get yourselves killed. Sweet. Like, all of this shit. We'd dude, fucking just roll it. by, flip them off. <laughs> the guy in the back would fucking moon them and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, like the, that's, like, the extent of my skating. But it is something I want to get into. Like, I, I, used to, I used to longboard. I loved longboarding. It's fun, huh? Um... Oh, yeah. I tried to I tried doing other shit like tricks and stuff on on a uh, uh, normal skateboards, but uh, I never really got it down to the point where I'd go the to a fucking skate park and do shit. You, you know, sound it's funny. World. It's funny. Like <laughs> with, with skateboarding, you have like two genres too, or yeah, maybe like three or, or a couple. But you know, like like you know how surfing has their shortboard division. They have their like big wave division, sort of. They have their you know, um, kind of everything in between. Like skating has that too in a way. Skating has um, your street skating. And then it has like your bowl skating, and then it has your your downhill longboarding, yeah. And that's like a that's like a whole different thing. Um, <laughs> there's a bug on the. <laughs> yeah. That's what she Get said. Get distracted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a like, bug on me, <laughs> dude. Lo but longboarding is is just a whole other discipline. You know, you're, you're working with with high speeds. We, I, me For and sure. my buddy uh, Max Vincent, uh, we would go to La, La Honda. And uh, we would go skate, and some of the best hills were out there. And I remember in high school, uh, maybe after high school too, a little bit, um, we would go longboard these 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 hills and just like have the best time, man. We'd be out there all day, mm -hmm. you know. In high school, his mom would drop us off out there, and we would go skate. And ah, uh, man, I you know I wish we had more more footage of that, but um, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun out there, man. We got a lot of bruises. Yeah. We had, you know, we had the the sliding gloves, and we were we were. Really did you put uh? <laughs> did you like make them yourself? Like I remember, I, I think remember I had a friend put like those roller hockey hockey pucks, like glue them, hot them to glue some gloves. However he did it. Yeah, I get some garden gloves, and then hot hot glue like a candle or something to it. Yeah. Man, or, or I mean, damn, I mean, I remember those days, man. There's it was super fun, and you're just trying. Fuck yeah, stuff. skating, times. dope. Justin uh, hates skating. He's no, the, I love it. He's the kind of guy who shouts at skaters for being outside. All right, let's, let's change directions. <laughs> you whippersnappers. Ever since he got bullied. Get off I'll my tell you, lawn. I'll tell you something crazy. I remember, um, so my, my downhill stories growing up, um, I remember when I was in San Francisco a long time ago, I got called uh, by one of my friends who's best friends with Jake Phelps and basically said, hey, let's uh, come over to San Francisco and come skate in a Thrasher magazine con you know, contest. Yeah. So, I basically left LA, took a trip out to SF, and um, basically broke my ankle the first day I was there. Never been to SF in my life, and basically couldn't skate the Thrasher contest. So 
you know, a few months ago down the line, and um, I realized the only way I can get to work, because I was working at Vans at, in San Francisco at the time, was how to bomb this hill. Mm. So l- let me tell you, remember, I'm bombing the hill in a cast. Oh Shut the gosh. fuck Jeez. up. Swear you're to God. A, you're a G. And it was my left foot, which would be my back foot. Right. So you could already tell if your back foot's in the back, most of your foot's going to be in the front. So I remember... Is there a video on this? Um, No, actually, at that time, God I don't, I don't even it. think... I, at that time, I didn't even think of it because I was in such survival mode that I didn't even think it was that big of a deal. <laughs> so Justin, why weren't you there filming this? But like, why would I be? Why, why were you not there filming this? Why would I just want to see this video? Jesus, so sir. basically, yeah, it was crazy. I never forget. Um, I had to start bombing the hill at Switch. Oh, so I'm bombing these oh. hills, San Francisco Switch, uh, w- w- swerving through cars. And uh, one time, um, I actually never got hit. But the one time I rode a motorcycle in San Francisco and I had my cast on, I had these two crutches in the back, almost like a fucking samurai sword. <laughs> I got hit by a car. It's like the jackass I actually logo. almost uh, hit by a car and got ran over um, at no that time. Way. Wow. Oh, no shit. And then after that, I was Good just thing like, you had the crutches it. on you. I'd rather bomb a hill with a cast than drive a motorcycle. And that's wow. Like, yeah. That's and that was like my too. story. Right? Damn, dude. Danny Way had a, had a story kind of like that. You remember when Danny Way jumped the Great Wall of China? Oh, yep. yeah. Oh, yeah. So the first time he did it, he ate shit and broke he broke his fucking leg. Oh, fuck. But he's like, well, we came all the way out to China. We made this giant fucking ramp. We might as well make it, it happen. He goes up again and fucking lands it what? on a broken leg. Hey, adrenaline on a like broken leg. Yeah, it was like an 80-foot gap. Can you believe that? Jesus uh, Christ. That yeah. doesn't even make sense. That's, That's the difference between people who, who are like hobbyists and people who are just they're professionals. Like he, You have to be so dedicated for that. Like doing a paddle race with staph infection. Exactly. <laughs> and and zero training. Yeah. <laughs> zero training. Uh, oh, that was you are a beast. Hey, you want to tell us about tell us about this paddle race? So, yeah. so this happened where? So this is the Coronado Loop. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, a pretty well known paddle race. I think it started in 1996. I want to say 1995. Uh, yeah, something. It was. I, uh, it's, never mind. Something mm-hmm. around there. It might you know it might be less or more. Um, but yeah, it's, it's generally. It's a paddle, prone paddle board race, um, arms only, around the, the island of Coronado in San Diego. And uh, it's about 12 miles. Wait, is it North Island or South Island? It's the island. I don't know. The oh. island of Coronado. That big island. So you island. start where, the where, island. where the bridge where, where, where it thins <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> you start on the inland side of that. Yeah, and go when you go over the, the bridge. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. You go over the, the bridge, bro. That's good. Yeah. But yeah. you paddle <laughs> under the bridge. So wherever that is. And around all the naval. Oh, the yeah, naval. That's, that's the, na- the military. Than I was thinking of. Yeah, the yeah. naval ships. Yeah. It's a 12 mile paddle. But man, you know. And so we got there. I got there. Um, I ended work. I work at. Uh, I ended work about 3.30. And then right after work, I drove to Coronado, got there around like, you know, maybe like four or something. Um, in the morning. Yeah, in the, in the morning, no sleep. I slept for maybe like an hour, I mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. And then so, I don't know how this happened, but I woke up. I, li- I, I heard some voices outside. And uh, it was a couple guys. And these were the couple of really cool dudes that I, I, I later became uh, good friends with. And uh, hopefully going to paddle with them again. But yeah, then everyone just started coming in and... and I was pretty pumped, and yeah, we, uh, so the fog came in, so the normal route is around the the Coronado Loop, and the fog came in, so we couldn't. We had to wait a little while, and uh, we ended up actually switching the route to the other side of the island, and then we just did a kind of a half halfway around the, the island, and then the other halfway on the mm-hmm. same side. So you ended up doing ten and a half miles. It was about yeah, ten point thirty, I want to say, but who's counting? Yeah. So on a scale of one to ten, how did you feel coming in? Coming in, I I mean I left everything out there. I, right. I when I came in, I think you saw me too. Mm-hmm. I was. Tell I was them about g- the I hell we were texting you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah, so, so we about got a, we got a three <laughs> person good shit group right chat. Here. So we have a group chat, right? I was so in Santa Barbara. Spill it out. So, yeah. David's, so David's about six miles into yeah. this ten. I'm about six miles in. He, he's, no he's getting training. fired from his job yeah. at this point. I I so oh I God. I had I had, I just got a really good job at World Famous Restaurant. Shout out to World Famous. Um, <laughs> hey Shout Nicole, baby. Yeah. Oh my. God. So World Ooh. Famous. And she I might ha- listen to this. And I started. I I started work at eleven o'clock. I start work that morning at eleven. Uh-huh. And the race starts at around like seven or eight, <laughs> but because of the fog, we had to wait like an hour. We we're waiting for the fog to burn, <laughs> and so we were delayed a lot. And I tried to call my I called my work in the day before, and then I called him that day too, telling him like, "Hey, I'm probably gonna be late." 
you know. Right. But, okay, well, you know, I mean, you can't really you can't really switch from the 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 schedule. You know, this is this is the schedule. So we have you on there for a reason. You know, you have to be in. I'm like, okay, cool. You do yeah. assholes. Like so when you're on a schedule, you have to be there. That's a weird. Anyway, so <laughs> so, yeah. so I hang I up. We go. On. Yeah, so we That's go. Unheard of. And um, you know, I'm already stressed out enough on no sleep. I haven't. I ha- I think I had some M and M's, some beef jerky, and a and a mountain a Red Bull, mm-hmm. and a Red Bull. And um, this is his fuel for the whole race. So we're That's paddling. Just his diet. I'm about so halfway. Wait, wait, wait. What, what <laughs> was that? One more time, just so everyone can hear that. Yeah, so, so this was his fuel for an eight mile race. Yeah, this is w- this is my no fuel. No practice at all. No practice. I had a, staff infection. I had, I had uh, <laughs> some beef jerky and then I had a Red Bull. Yeah, he had. So he has and some nerds. <laughs> <laughs> he had some nerds. Don't leave the nerds infections. out. Yeah, fa- staff. Uh, staff. Staff on my neck and, and, on and my MRSA. Back. He, didn't, he didn't know, but he had MRSA on his back at the time too. Jesus Christ, where were you? Were you rolling around in the streets of Harlem? I was, yes, Harlem. Yes. Jesus Christ, <laughs> mate. Yeah. So <laughs> the truth, King. But then, so halfway, o- halfway there. So <laughs> the way the way I have it set up is I have I have my water bottle in front of me, so I have two of my water bottles, and then I put my phone in a waterproof case, and then I I, I have a, a speak. Normally I have a speaker, but this time I didn't. And so you gotta lock the case tight, so you can't really access the I can't, phone very yeah, well. Yeah, right, so right. Where, where I have to, I, I tie my phone to the rack, so it's sideways to me. So I can't once I set something, I can't look at it again really without stopping it anyway. Um, so I have my music going. <coughs> I'm, Is this know. with the short board or long board? I'm just curious. So it's it's a it's a 18 foot prone paddle board. Okay, so, so it would be like a paddle board you would use like just to pad- uh, with a paddle, but I mean you had it set up to where you can not even with have a paddle. No, so I'll, I'll actually show you after this. Uh, I'll show you. I have it back here. It's it's uh, it's only for prone paddle boarding. So it's yeah, like a, just it's, using your arm. It's like a giant long board. Oh shit! It's yeah. like a giant long board. Uh, I'll show you a photo. Um, so anyway, so halfway around halfway, I'm I'm paddling, you know. Music's going pretty good. I'm getting some good good tunes going. <laughs> and I just all of a sudden, you know, I start getting this. He's text. listening to music on his phone. Ding. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, it wasn't the ding. It was like the. Oh, yeah. You know. I so we're in a group text <laughs> message. I'm in Santa Barbara. And uh, Steven's yeah. on the beach. I'm He's texting Justin boarding. updates like, yeah. like, oh, first person just came in. And then we start like just having a chat yeah. in the group chat. And I'm like already getting just frustrated. I'm like, every what time the it dings, his music stops. <laughs> yeah. yeah so it stops. And then I, and then just so eventually I couldn't the stop the music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't stop the music. So I'm trying to turn my phone <laughs> down so I didn't hear it. And I would go from like, all right, maybe it stopped. And I would try and turn nope. my phone on. <laughs> and it would go, like it would just, I mean, it would just. Well, apparently the noise was way more annoying. We were texting ding, each ding, other ding, over ding. about an hour, and yeah. we sent probably ninety texts. I mean, I was I was on the road. <laughs> it did not so stop. I just, I it didn't else stop. To do. And I yeah. was getting more. I thought it, I I didn't know who it was. I thought it was work. It's like a third of the race. And yeah. it was yeah. Like and the last <laughs> part where you just need to. I was in. I was so I was just like I was <laughs> cursing at the phone. I was like, God damn it! What the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> like God damn it! And, and remember, he is paddling while he is saying what the fuck. So that's a lot of yeah. I'm paddling. On the paddle crazy. boards, we Where have you these. Have a weak mind. We, we have these. Um, <laughs> we have these like uh, little pads, and so a, a lot of guys will say this too. But like after a certain, after a certain distance, mm-hmm. you ha- you know you're keeping your neck up the whole time. You're keeping your neck up, and eventually you can't do that anymore. So they give you this pad, and you can put it on like this Velcro strip, and it's just for resting your chin on, so you can look down as you paddle. So you're just getting so tired, and your neck muscles are so fucking just done that you have to rest your head. And I just remember looking down and just thinking, like, that's all, the only thing I could hear was that noise, the text noise. <laughs> and it was just, <laughs> that's the it did worst, not stop dude. It, it and just then he, he doesn't know if it's his work. Yeah, yeah, so I'm so I think this is work. So at this at this he point, it's a thing. Oh, yeah. I'm so yeah. fired. He thought he was losing his job. He's all, yeah. he's all stressed out. I got, <laughs> I, yeah, super I got, super I got out some, for the last part of the race. I got some calls. I think I got a call, and then I got some texts. I I knew I was late. I knew I was already late. Like, so so, so we all want to know. Um, at this time, were those text messages from work, or was it from your baby mama? They were not from my baby mama. <laughs> okay, okay. I just wanted to clear the air for everyone. Yeah, right. We don't talk to her anymore. No, yeah. No, I wish one day. Right. Man, you Hopefully. know, <laughs> but it, one, but yeah, honestly, right. I don't know if it's worse though because it wasn't for my work. Yeah, so right. they didn't even text me. Who they, was it? It was it was, it was these was guys. Us. Oh. It was me and Steven, dude. It was Justin and we Steven. We didn't know that that was going on. And yeah. I, I wanted you know, so bad to just so stop. I wanted it's to just stop, sit on my board, text them, "Hey guys, like Shut fucking the fuck stop, up. dude," <laughs> or, or at least just turn my phone off all the way. I couldn't see the screen because it was like this to me. I need this music I, right now. Was, yeah, and it was like up here, and I couldn't really like. I'd I'd have to stop, and I, that's the last <laughs> thing I wanted to do. 
if anything, I, I'd say uh, trying to make it to work on time was one of the things that kept me going. Mm-hmm. Except that was the you know so when I got well, in, finished I, an he didn't, hour and yeah, a half he, he after your shift fi- started. He didn't finish last, so I didn't. I, I didn't no, finish no. last. I finished about seventh to last that's, out that's of like bad. out of like a hundred people, I think, with no training. With yeah. no training, no training, beef no jerky sleep, nerds. staff infection, and beef Versa. jerky nerds and a Red Bull will get you there. For they breakfast. will get you there for breakfast. That's Spoken fuel. by that's a champion, champion. Fuel right there. <laughs> true, true athlete, right there. Breakfast of champions. Breakfast of champions. And then so after that, we got in. That's a true athlete. You know, we got way. in, we had some muffins, <laughs> and uh, I ended up not going to work because I was already, it was like one o'clock oh my at this God. point. Oh, yeah. 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 shift started at 11. Yeah, it started at 11, 12, 11, 12, 1. And, and honestly, thinking now, I probably could have gone back, but I was so tired. Well, yeah. we were I just I could imagine. That's weird how you retired after a race and you were going to go to work. Yeah, and I, you know, I just, I, I was like, you know what? That they is already insane. know the deal. That I didn't, I didn't, didn't go, go in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go into work, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how I uh, I worked there. I that's think that's how I, you got fired from. I World probably worked famous. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the I probably worked there maybe two weeks, and uh, that was and I you know and and when I worked there, I did I, I did you know I worked hard. You Just know, I enough time stopped. to give notice. Did you give him? Did you show him the medal that you got? I didn't get a medal. Oh, got no part. No a medal. participation trophy at all. Can you believe that? Yeah, so you didn't shitty. win the raffle. The only thing I got was nipple burn. We stayed for the <laughs> raffle. Ouch. Nipple oh rash. Nipple oh, rash. And a killer, a killer rash nips. guard suntan. Staff nips. <laughs> <laughs> he had like the craziest like, snipples. I got snipples. Huh? Oh, you did. You Your look like you were wearing a bra, ten. dude. Oh, yeah. My, my, yeah I got a, a gnarly uh, sunburn. So mm-hmm. I did this race and all I got was this lousy sunburn. But it was a great race. It was the first race I've ever done on my prone paddleboard, which is actually why I bought the paddleboard in the first place. Oh. I have do a question. Races. Do you think bought if you one? were to wear, like, so if you were to put, like, any, like, different, did you do it with the swimsuit or did you do it with that one? So I actually did it with a neoprene vest. It's like a paddle vest. Okay, yeah, because um, I was wondering, because I know with the vest, sometimes they do create rashes. Yeah, it's like a two mil, yeah, so right under place, here, it was, it was neoprene, oh, so right shit. under my armpit right here, it would it would chafe under oh, my okay. armpit. I was doing this all the time, it would chafe right here under my armpit. Um. It was actually worse. Yeah, that's the worst. Dude. That's the yeah. worst. That's horrible. And, you know, it it was it was hot too. It was a hot day, and I I thought it was gonna be a little colder. Um, dude, I probably it was nice just and foggy. I really thought it was gonna be chilly, and then I show up and I'm sitting there just it fo- baking it burns. in the fog. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god. I got such you a bad can still sunburn. get sunburned in the fog. In, in, dude, in oh that's yeah, the dude. worst. That's, that's the worst. That's, that's when it sneaks yeah, up on that's yeah. when it's the worst. And yeah. so when like you're right realizing you're getting every now and then. You know, oh, and then and th- throughout this paddle, <laughs> I had two nosebleeds throughout the paddle. So as I'm paddling, <laughs> that right. sounds healthy. My nose is just <laughs> dripping blood, and I'm like pouring. I'm trying to like as I'm paddling, I'm trying to like splash water onto my board to wipe away the blood, and it was kind of clumping up. And I was like, oh shit! And that happened twice on the that paddle. Oh god, there's gonna be. Why were you having a nosebleed? Was that just? <laughs> oh, I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe high blood pressure. Yeah. I, I you know, I think it's staff. Eat him. He's been, unhealthy. Yeah, yeah staff does make your blood like coagulate sometimes right? i think it was coagulated mm. yes that's why i was all he like, was filled with blood diseases out there dude damn the poor guy i was so just I, you know yeah, i was sh- actually a risk to the sharks that beef jerky know? was the first protein you'd eaten in a month yeah, yeah. damn <laughs> okay. oh, but yeah man. so that was my first well, good thing you didn't get eaten by sharks I, yeah glad we didn't get run over by any boats so that no was boats. cool luckily that's his boat his uh board is so long that he looks like a shark out there yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know so shout out to our dolphin it yeah. was just really cool seeing the paddle community, man. You know, that was my first time at one of those races and for just sure. seeing the people, the amount of people who, who love the sport and, you know, just do it for fun. You know, it, it was is a really good race. Any shout outs? Shout out to um, Hanu, Hanu. Hanu Hanu. Shout out to Paddle Guru. They are the they're the main paddle. Um, what do you call it? Like a hub and our new sponsor. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. They don't sue us. <laughs> they're, they're I thought it was your Mate. Your oh, I wish. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Guayaki, that'd be great. All right, yeah. Guayaki, shout out, sponsor us now. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Hit us whatever that is. You heard it from <laughs> Will first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gotta listen to Will. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Yeah. Well, getting back to you, Will. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, was, okay, so I was, was more questions about you, dude. Yeah, I was, yeah. so I was scrolling through your uh, your Instagram. Oh, we got a soccer here. I see on one of your skateboards it says uh, live heavy, travel light. Yep, that's my tattoo. My oh, he's got oh, tattoo. Oh, no shit. Nice, Yep, dude. it's on his ink. I like it's it. It's on his skin. Yeah. yeah. What's the, uh, what's the meaning behind that? So, um, best way to put it was I have 10 generations of witchcraft in my family. Yes, this is what oh, I want to get to, dude. So, basically, in my family, you know, we had a lot of... I guess I'm going to probably break it down a little easier for everyone on, uh, to explain so it's not so, like, superficial or super weird. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
you know, growing up as a kid, I was adopted. Okay. So basically, I didn't know like I had ten generations of witchcraft in my family. So your actual like birth parents were birth parents. Yeah, my blood family. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Were the ones that had all that going on. So mm-hmm. you know, basically, you know, I got this tattoo at a breaking point in my life where I kind of thought nothing was ever going to work. And mm-hmm. basically I, I OD'd and, you know, I was basically about to die. And um, I got this tattoo at a really good point because, you know, I needed something to kind of make, help me realize where I come from. Yeah. So, you know, the thing with being adopted and being an orphan was like, you don't even know who you are. You don't know like where you're from, who your parents are. Sometimes some people don't even know what their age is, their actual age. So, mm-hmm. It was really cool to kind of, you know, have this tattoo as a mark, travel light, live heavy, to remember, you know, what I do as a skateboarder and my blood, where I come from. Yeah. Basically, I look at my skateboard as a broomstick. And I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it's like um, I've had, you know, my mom tell me you're already doing what you're supposed to do because you're riding that piece of wood, which is a broomstick. And I mean... Mm. Oh when shit. I met her growing up, I was like, that doesn't even make sense. So so you met your... You I met, met them a few friend. years ago, yeah. Okay, that's cool. And um, she was the one that told me the day that I was born, basically my grandma died. Believe this or not, it's a pretty heavy story. But um, my, gr- my mom was six months pregnant with me at the time. She didn't know that she was pregnant with me. And my grandma came up to her and looked at her and basically pointed at her stomach and said, you're six months pregnant with the boy. And, no you know, no way, witches, they remember this, guys, witches do have really good um, what's the clairvoyance mm-hmm. and they're able to see things beyond what we can see. So, I mean, she saw that my mom was pregnant with me and my mom was killing me because my mom was doing stuff at the time that she wasn't supposed to be doing if you're mm-hmm. pregnant. So, yeah, at that time, I mean, really, I guess I got lucky and my mom found out that my grandma was right. And my grandma, my mom told me that the day that I was born is the day my grandma died. No way. Yeah. Wow. So it's pretty heavy. heavy. Rest dude. in peace, grandma. Yeah, and R.A.P. Yeah. You know, I'm the last one of my family from the 10 generations of witchcraft. So I don't do it, obviously. I'm a skateboarder. But, you know, <laughs> I do have a lot of weird things happen to me with owls and hawks and Owls crows are pretty spiritual oh, shit. creatures, too, I think. Owls, for some reason, they're, they're used... A lot in like in like um, reference, but also just in, in general in the world, they're very like they're the only bird that has zero sound when they fly their when they flap their fly wings. their wings. Yeah. yeah, they're zero sound. They're the only bird in the world. And I'll tell you what, you know, what's crazy is before I found all this out, I used to have a barn owl that would follow me around. And oh I mean, shit. fucking, this thing was creepy looking. It would look at me, like stay oh. there at the skate park. It would go to the you're kidding. I used to go to a graveyard to smoke splits with my friends. I'd see that same fucking bar now with the weird black stripe on the side <coughs> right here just land right there in the graveyard. Like, there's all these fucking coincidences where... Well, no doubt that I, happened yeah, at the I graveyard. Don't, no yeah. doubt. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, if it had that was an addition. Somewhere. I, don't, yeah. I don't know much about, like, witchcraft or, like, how yeah, that, like, t- tell ties us, in. Tell us about that, man. Okay, so, really, I mean, witchcraft, we all know, goes back beyond Salem, Massachusetts, yeah. you know, we're talking about so far back that like, we don't even know what the origin of witchcraft really became. Mm-hmm. But I mean, from what my family, what it was, you know, what I got told was basically it's like, it's like a certain blood, certain blood, certain frequency, certain bloodline of families that have the ability to conjure up magic. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it comes through paganism, like, like, uh, before Christianity, basically all these small tribes practiced like these. Well, that's what I thought they too. Would do blood sacrifices. But um, it was it was a different. It's like there's actually another name for it. Mm-hmm. So paganism was like the lower aspect of it, and what they were doing was almost like I'm not gonna say more insidious, but mm-hmm. a little bit more in the black magic realm. You see, paganism okay. isn't really black magic, mm-hmm. but my family was doing black magic and white magic. So. You know, really, in reality, growing up, I have no idea what the fuck this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did start having weird shit happen to me once I was told about me having 10 generations of witchcraft in my family. And, I mean, just weird shit, dude. Did, did things start to, you know, you start to figure things out when... I did. Yeah. Yeah, I started learning um, how to manifest, I guess you would say, things in my life that I needed. But without doing the whole... 
hocus pocus or any of that just really you know <laughs> thinking yeah. in my Never. head how yeah. do i make this happen yeah. yeah boom i would manifest it through visualization but my mom was trying to explain that that's i can do that because since my grandma passed away and she got conceived the day that i was born she passed down whatever Definitely magic some energy right she there. had yeah, yeah. oh me. no shit yeah. Yeah. Ever, so ever, she pretty uh, much um like gave her life to to you to so i could survive yeah because like you were saying your mom had no idea and she was you know doing, doing all drugs stuff. at the time so your grandma essentially gave her life for years pretty much yeah, oh, rest in peace grandma it's fucking crazy. wild dude yeah 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 so it's it's weird and uh yeah i mean i <clears throat> i don't know i guess the best way to explain it is it makes sense travel mm-hmm. light live heavy i mean it all adds up into one ball of, you know of a picture yeah but, yeah, it's it's interesting, man. When you get into witchcraft, I mean, you do see that there, there is a good side to it, and there's a really nasty, dark side to sure. it. Sure, yeah. yeah. And it's you know, you believe this it, right? a lot in our day to day in our day to day earth. I gotta get done. Uh, good seeing you, brother. You too, man. I'm yep. glad you could do this. Hell yeah! Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. You know, I I I try to explain this to some people, but it's like, you know. You don't really need to do that type of stuff to make stuff happen, you know? Right. But I think back in the day, like, there wasn't enough resources and there wasn't enough ways to make stuff happen. Mm -hmm. So they would have to use these herbs and these energies and these potions to create some sort of magic to create the reality they want. But in reality, we are the ones that can create the magic without those potions. You just have to believe in yourself and... Have the right ingredients of energy, thoughts, feeling, frequency. It's all about the frequency you're putting out that can create your, you know, your destiny. So I do try to tell people who I have met that do witchcraft, you know, be super careful with uh, what you're contacting. Because, you know, a lot of the time, you know, they'll be doing Ouija boards. And, right. You know, mm-hmm. they're contacting. There's is, a, is the Ouija boards real? It is real. Is it real? And there's a demon that does follow it called Zozo the Demon. If you guys look him up on YouTube, Zozo the Demon is one of the most gnarliest demonic uh, entities that do uh, are, are opened while you're using a Ouija board. And, you know, what happens is, is basically it, when you're doing a Ouija board, it opens up a portal for any energy or spirit to come and contact you. Okay. So, I mean, I've never done it as a kid, and I'm actually grateful. My parents <laughs> wouldn't let me do it. Yeah, that's it's good. It's like the one game they wouldn't let me be around. Yeah. And you know, I yeah. want you guys to think about this. If you look at the Ouija board, right? You can't even bring up a picture right now of the Ouija board. If you look at the age differences for a Ouija board, I mean, it says uh, made for children, okay. eight years old and up. Yeah, it's so weird. Think about that. Eight <clears throat> years old and using a Ouija board. Don't you think some weird shit's going to happen to you getting older, knowing that you had a Ouija board you were fucking with your whole life? Yeah. Yeah, and it's, I mean... I, if it's I, weird how they have that out there. Yeah, and they got the evil wand. You guys remember that toy? The, I, like, weird wand that would, like, would have a girl cutting herself and shit? No, I don't okay, remember that. that. I wasn't Dude, look at all of this stuff. Yeah, this stuff was on Hasbro. And with then all with the that. Ouija board, um, you know, as, as like, gnarly as it could also be, but couldn't it be good, too? Like, Yeah, if you're contacting a dead family member or somebody that you need to get in contact with for self-purposes to help you release any tension you have with that family member. It could be used for that as well, but like sometimes it could be also a hoax and it's not your family member. Yeah. It's actually a demonic like per- entity. Imper- impersonating them? Yeah, impersonating them. When when my buddy passed away, I remember trying to, uh, like I was recording myself asking <coughs> questions at the mm-hmm. place where he, he, he passed. And I remember like, you know, kind of nervous, but I was like listening back to it, you know, and it was a nighttime and I felt it was a good time to do this. And I was like, kind of nervous not really but like not really sure what i would if i would hear anything but yeah. I, I was like oh, you know, maybe if i record it i'll hear something like you know some stutter or some you know some sort of um some static or some something. static or something but uh you know i wanted to believe in that but i didn't i never really heard anything you know but i yeah maybe i mean maybe ouija board for for use for good would be something in the future i think whoever created it had a better I guess the better way to explain it was they had more of an idea of creating harm. I don't okay. think a Ouija board was made for good. I mean, because really? get onto a major gaming thing. It has, to, it has to do with the people that who are owning it. They're probably doing witchcraft themselves. Who do you think started Ouija board? Uh, it was Hasbro. 
Really? Yeah, it's a toy company. Okay. If you, if you look, so when you get the board and you look at it, you look at the bottom, and it, it, it is a toy company. Right. Yeah. That produces them. Exactly. Interesting. But everyone's I, had the worst experiences. I wonder them. what gives it that, like, uh, you know, spirit connection. Good ask. That's a good question. I have no idea. Yeah. That what, is a good question. What are the What are the grounds for using one? Like, do you have to be in a dark room, do you think? Or do you have to be, like, out in the open? Do you have to have candles lit? What, what do you think? I would say if anyone was doing it, and I mean, from what I've seen people do it the right way, uh, I think it had to do with the candles, the dark room, the building you're at. It could be a haunted building. You oh, see yeah. a lot of people go to haunted buildings. Like, I know you know in New England, too, right? Yeah. Actually, I, I got another story after this, but continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad. Uh, in, New, <laughs> in New England, uh, yeah, I've, I've met a lot of people who would go to haunted locations like the Salem mass fucking burial grounds for the witches that got buried you know you'd go to their graveyard and i'd see people ouija ouija boards they're like on top of someone's grave trying to talk to them well, yeah i think that was more of like where people were using it to for better purposes than actually being like what an eight-year-old kid just swinging this thing around like that trying to figure out what the words are you know it's just like yeah yeah it could go either way because you see a lot of times too, like parties will do it where multiple people will be around a Ouija board, and, and then something everyone nasty has happens. their hand. Yeah, everyone has their hand on it, and you know, I mean, I think a lot of times too, like you know, everyone's kind of working to put that that uh that spotter on a word or a letter. Um, so I think that's kind of where it gets its appeal, maybe like as a group thing, like oh, let's all do this tonight, you know, like fuck it, you know, let's, let's see how it goes. But uh, I think yeah, like being on your own, being like with some people, like in a place like that, in like kind of a, a spiritual place. Yeah. You know, maybe a place like like a graveyard or a place where someone maybe had you know passed on. Um, I mean, I've have I've had heard uh, some from really good you know resources of friends of mine in New England. Um, you know, there's two uh, two coincidences where people were using that Ouija board, and um, there were skaters I know. And um, they actually had to have an exorcism done on them. No shit. Have you seen one of those done? Exorcism? No, actually, I've heard you're not. Yeah, I've never seen it, but I wouldn't want to be around it. Because yeah, whatever. I've heard it they're, like they're gnarly. Gnarly, dude. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen one done. So, so what are the some of the things that have happened in your life that has been related to the whole like your generations of being in witchcraft and things like that? Like, what what have you noticed? Is there anything you've noticed? I've had people come up to me and say, I know who your grandma is. Really? Yeah. And they random say, people. Random people saying, I know who you are. No shit. Telling sure. me that you like, I don't know, like just really weird shit. Dude. Like being like, oh, you contain like your, like the magic from your family. And basically, long story short, I would just look at them and I was pretty young at the time. I would just be like. Uh, you don't think it was like that she you, owed you the money? You don't have yeah. that. Anything like that. You don't have that same connection? With uh, with the, what do you like mean? Like the um, where you know you were saying they have like the ability to like see. Well, it's in your blood, right? Someone. Yeah, I I do have that. Yeah. yeah, I I feel like me as a skater, I'm more focused on my skating and that. So like, obviously, it keeps me away. You have from an outlet. Like, I have an mm-hmm. outlet, so I'm not focused on that. But I mean, there are times where I have had dreams about stuff. I was gonna ask you about that. Like like you must have some pretty interesting dreams dude my dreams are fucking crazy i was like gonna ask wild. you about that like, a, like like maybe like an hour ago but yeah how, how how is that for you like do you ever write your dreams down you ever do that yeah you you know i'll tell you one crazy dream i had recently that kind of plays into the role of where we're at right now in the world and mm-hmm. probably more of the scare of like the bigger picture that can happen in the next few years um i basically had a dream that i woke up in a coliseum and there was a native american chief We'll, we'll let this guy pass. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the only problem here. with recording outside. Yeah. The mic's pick it up pretty <laughs> well, actually. So yeah. You know. So yeah, we the uh, the Coliseum. I basically had a dream. Like I woke up in the Coliseum, and there was this Native American chief there, and he basically looked like hundreds of years old. I mean, this dude looked like he was from like like stars past, like another galaxy, right? Mm-hmm. He has his conch shell that's like three feet big and like three feet wide. A conch shell, you know, shell from yeah. like the ocean. Yeah. So he looks at me and basically points at these two animals, which was a tiger and a black jaguar on his side. So when he does that, he looks at me and says, "If the time is now and the end is near." So I look at him and I didn't see anything. And then I was like, 
I think I said like, why? And then he's like, it has to be done. And I was like, what the fuck? And then he blows into the conch shell. Both of these animals randomly disappear. Then the world starts shaking like an earthquake. And remember, in my dream, this is portrayed in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, sorry. Um, or LA. And uh, yeah, fucking the world basically had this huge earthquake. And I, he told me, I need to redirect people to learn how to treat the world and live, live and coexist with the planet and the animals the right way. You know, not taking or consuming or destroying right, but one with nature building and re- recreating everything and yeah basically at that point this 300 foot wave came at me and i mean when i saw this wave i knew for a fact in my dream i was gonna die and somehow i got washed up onto a ship that basically went underwater and remember in this when this wave hit everyone died Mm -hmm. Like, it was pretty, like, everyone didn't survive. It was 300 feet, you know? And I basically get shot down into this little area where there's these Rastafarians with blonde hair. They're, like, really white dreadlocks teaching, uh, you know, I just got to say Caucasian or white people how to treat the planet right and stop manipulating, you know, the earth and shit like that. And at that time, I woke up. And there was an earthquake, actually, a few weeks after that. That was really bad. So it was kind of weird, but no wave or anything hit. You know what's interesting? Um, there was a, a dream I had, too, a, a few years ago now. But um, this is when I was kind of into recording my dreams. And mm-hmm. I would, like, write a little <coughs> bit, uh, write a snippet on it. And then I would draw a photo. Like, I draw a picture of what, what it kind of looked like. And yeah. it kind of had the same thing. We were in a forest, and I was with my buddy Max. And I was with this, this other uh, friend, friend of mine. And uh, we were in a forest, and... In, out in the distance in the forest we see this like all this water coming in and it was, it was a wave and i remember like thinking like we had to you know get somewhere we were running away from this wave and it was like through the forest so this wave's coming through the trees and just coming at us and there was this little kind of like a shack almost kind of like a um you know like a little house little shed whatever and we all went in there and uh it passed us and you know we were okay we were safe and i just i don't i don't know what it is about that dream but it's it's stuck with me ever since and um, yeah, like the wave, some kind of, you know, and I, I, I do believe in, in meaning in dreams. Yeah. You know, because I've, I've had a few things where like, you know, like blood coming out the mouth and, and, and you kind of look it up and you're like, oh, you know, it, it's telling you like you're doing something destructive and y- it's repetitive, you know. And, and that was I got that dream just after quitting another job, just leaving. And after that, I was like, fuck, I got to stop doing that, dude. Because I had that dream, and it was like, hey, you're on a path, and you're... you're did you stop doing that? I did. I get, the next job I had was, I think, on the boat. And I just worked I worked there and never left. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard to explain, man. But I think, yeah, dreams, the ones that you remember, I think, are important to mm-hmm. you, spe- mm. s- like, specifically. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, I definitely recommend writing them down, and you know, if you can. But... Yeah, and a more p- and a positive note on all that is, you know, when you're having these dreams, always remember they're not there to really harm you or take you away from who you are. They're more there to guide you and kind of give you a, a bigger perspective on what you're dealing with in your life on the sidelines of what you're really actually dealing with, which my mom passed away pretty recently. So uh, Sorry to hear about that, man. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That's terrible. Mm. Um, yeah, she was suffering, so... You know, it's, it's, it's good. Your your uh, biological mom or your your my adopted your mom. Adopt- oh wow. Yeah, she passed away, and you know, after that, I was having dreams basically about her as a butterfly, and I mean, I would have butterflies literally land on my hand. I mean, think about that. Who do you know has can say a butterfly's landed like? I mean, exact- you rarely see butterflies. Right. Yeah. And then to land in your hand. Land on my hand. That's, yeah. That was a pretty interesting dream I had. Was she with you when you were little? Like, like how old were you when you were adopted? It was like a few years in. So I was an orphan until I was like four, I think. Okay. And then. So she was with you for like pretty much as long as you can remember, almost. Yeah. Yeah. She a good woman. She was rad. Yeah. Yeah. Did she live in New York? She lived in New York, and then uh, she passed away in Florida. In Florida. Yep. And so did my grandma at that time too, and my uncle. So. So h- wow. why, how did you reconnect with your biological family? Um, <coughs> uh, it's actually kind of funny. It, well, my ex-girlfriend was ch- basically posting me on her f- 
Facebook, and my sister, her name's Julissa, basically found me and realized that I was her long-lost brother. So she contacted my ex-girlfriend, which her name was Nina, and Nina was like, yeah, yeah, that's Willie Correa. She was like, that's my long-lost brother. And then little do you know that that was actually right. They t- they tested that that was my actual real family. Oh, shit. Is Correa your adoptive Mom's That's my adopted name, yeah. Adopted. My what my bio- my biological name was uh Capella. Capella. Yeah. And what so what are you Native American and Native American, Guatemalan, uh Dominican and Nigerian. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I got some crazy descents for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. There's a, there, there's a good quote I I, was, I read about and it goes uh it's your blood in my veins. Tell me how I'm supposed to forget. Yeah. And that that's a good quote, man. That stuck with me for a little while, but there's, you know, it's a big it's a big deal, man. You know, and and I, you know, understood a lot of like times when people meet their like biological family. Cuz you're adopted. Right. You're a adopted of, too. Yeah, but a lot of times it could be more like detrimental, I think almost like for people like they experience more depression when they've met their actual biological parents. Yeah, no, I was kind of definitely a little d- not too stoked. You know, but it yeah. is what it is. Do you think you got how, closure how that, from that, or how was that experience of meeting your uh, your real parents for the first time? It was weird, man. Like I said, they told me about the magic. They told me about all that and all this stuff like right off the bat. Right off the bat, oh they've shit. been they've been literally waiting till I was in my twenties to tell me about it. Wow, I've always tried to imagine weird, what, right? what it would be like to to meet your actual parents. I always imagine that. Well, so David, you're you're adopted mm-hmm. too, right? Yeah. Well, my my dad, like I haven't met my dad yet, but. Uh, I heard he's like works in Guatemala in the army, mm-hmm. so he's like the head general of the Guatemalan army. Oh shit! Yeah, supposedly. I mean, that's what they said. Mm-hmm. I've never met the guy, so it's hard for me to say if this is a hundred percent true. Yeah, I could definitely vouch for everything else that I talked about today. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. Yep. So did you? So do you still talk to your biological mom? Nope, I haven't talked to her any of them since I saw them that last time. So like kind of one and done. One and done. Got it. Wow. Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope talking about it today kind of like I don't know I don't know if it lifted anything, but you know it's always good to get it out there. Oh, dude, no, for sure. It. I mean, it's it's it is what it is. I have closure from it, and I'm grateful to be an up and coming skater, and obviously have a good head on my shoulders, and yeah, you know, not allow any of that to obviously affect me as a person. Yeah. I mean, continue. I mean, dude, getting as good at skating as you are, like, it takes a lot of like determination and also just willpower to be able to you know do that long not a lot of people have that so mm-hmm. you definitely I have, s- have some you. really good shit going on Fuck for yeah. you appreciate you guys hell yeah 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 let's get some good skate photos in the future and uh hopefully we get some clips or something we'll, we'll show you guys and uh, yeah you guys got his instagram again you want to tell people your instagram yeah. one more time yep so um here's uh willie correa my instagram is at z-a-n-g dot will zang will and uh i'm sponsored by local skate shop arbor skateboards and uh buddy's hardware and uh to be on the lookout because i'm coming to a city near you hell yeah okay dude i've been scrolling through dude you got some sick ass shit on there dude fuck yeah thank you man yeah you should check it out some cool shit yeah yeah if you guys get bored just check out my videos and uh don't show your girlfriend (laughs) 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 let's <laughs> 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 just steal your girl over yeah. here <laughs> no nah, nah, there's plenty of there's plenty of efficiency i don't need your girl <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hey bad. thank you so much for being on this today man we really appreciate it yeah, yeah dude, dude, thanks for awesome. having me oh it was a great time yeah yeah dude i'm glad you could come through it's Hell yeah awesome appreciate you guys fucking uh what's the name of this under, under the, the palms. palms under the palms Network, Whoa. yes, <laughs> fucking hell yeah. out yeah. here. Yep, we're doing some more of this shit, dude. We're getting some more people on. Getting this yeah. that. Feels yeah. good, dude. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. No. let's do it. Awesome, Fuck man. Yeah, sweet. Hell yeah. All right, well, yeah, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Yeah. Fuck yeah, for thanks sure. for having me, guys. Appreciate yeah, it. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thanks for listening. All right, catch you guys later. Peace. You. <laughs>